crisis is something that then puts a pinch across all sectors because well hell, um, fuel is basically at the heart or it's an engine of every activity in terms of business and in terms of driving the economy another big story here is that on tax ruto is between a rock and a hard place do you suppose it's the case president was hard pressed to explain the new levies that is of course he wants to introduce when the cost of living is at all time high with experts wondering about the economic rationale of the proposed taxation measures a story captured on page six and page eight we're talking about 35 percent new income tax rate that is on kenyans earning about five hundred thousand per month up to 30 percent and we're also talking about proposed VAT or proposed VAT of fuel that will push the prices of petrol up by about 15 shillings amount to be deducted from salaries to go towards the housing fund is 3% from, of course, the employer and 3% from the employee. It's something that most of the people are saying, well, should not be made mandatory because, well, it's not in the interest of all Kenyans. And perhaps some of them argue that then housing is not a priority. And so the president trying to unpack this and, you know, making Kenyans try to understand just why his government is for this. Banks to auction properties as defaults hit about 39 billion. That is a story captured on page 26 of the business page of the Standard newspaper as well. That is something that will hit many. And in the global fraternity, Erdogan headed for a runoff in a Turkey election. It's quite interesting. They did not manage to hit the 50% expected him getting about 49 point something. And of course, the person who comes in next about 44 point something. And so then this is a possible runoff. Just who will carry the day? is a question of wait and see yes and away from it let's see whether there's another story here that has been captured well judges don't force learners to pray when in school this is according to a declaration by the judges they say well something to do with religion uh, should be personal and therefore students should not be pushed to religions or the types of religions that the schools then would term necessary because it would be against uh, you know these doctrines and so uh, they have made this move to say that learners should not be pushed to prayer or to pray that is when in school it will be interesting to watch and especially how then the teachers or the society will accept this because then for the longest of time we understand that those are the things that have guided the values and perhaps those are the acts and practices that have been looked at as practices that you know try to shape these students in the best way possible villages Mackenzie was chased from before shakahola it's interesting to see that even as he tried to traverse the different parts of the country different villages trying to spread the gospel uh, most of them did not accept his move because then at some point in time he kept on telling them that it would not be important for people to go to school as well as the e and this then rubbed you know some individuals the wrong way and really they could not accommodate him as a man of god that is the standard newspaper let's briefly look at what the people daily or sorry the daily nation speaks to and yes the front page of the daily nation more pain for hustlers as kerosene diesel prices jump up this also is one of the stories that i have picked also on the standard newspaper and perhaps one of the conversations that we'll be having this morning this even as duge nominated as the next cbk governor president ruto's advisor on fiscal affairs and budget policy set to take over from dr patrick Njoroge at the helm of the central bank of kenya the president has presented his name that is for vetting and then we'll get to see whether then he's lucky enough to sail through and uh, that is of course to a level of being appointed mosquito nets deal bites ps kemsa bosses the big story of the day that is the question of graft and we're talking about four billion global fund tender that is for the supply of 10 million mosquitoes nests to the poor kenyans we'll be discussing this as we continue with the broadcast top of the class you University of Nairobi makes list of the world 2000 leading varsities. That is the University of Nairobi is the only Kenya university listed among the world's top 2000 universities. That is in the latest rankings released by the Center of World University Rankings. The story captured on the front page, expounded on the back page. Those are the key stories, perhaps those ones as well, that find themselves on the People Daily. I'm not able to load it, but then again, in the event that it does, 
I'll be here to keep you posted. So from this very point, I think we have an idea of what is happening in the world of Nice. Allow us to briefly take a look at the stories that we have prepared. Well, and we have so much that has been worked on by my team. Let's proceed to that, Mr. Director, so that we are all aware of what is playing out in the world of news. What stories do we have? All right, there's uh, so much that we have worked on. Let's just allow us a moment to... All right, here we go. In a tragic incident on a Monday morning, five people lost their lives and eight others that sustained injuries. When a 14 seater Matatu, they were traveling in, collided with a bump, causing it to veer off the Nakuru Eldoret Road at such a one area and landed in the ditch. Chichi Josephine, details. Barely a month after a fatal accident occurred at Sachangwan area, another accident occurred Monday morning at the same area involving a 14-seater matato that hit a bump and lost control, claiming five lives as eight people were left injured. I was <laughs> talking to a man in Nairobi. I was <laughs> going to go to Missouri. I was 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 going Confirming the incident, Molo Sub County Police Commander Mwenda Mutamia said that this was a self-involved accident that took place at 2 a.m. Hii uh, ajali iliuzisha uh, Nissan Shato aina Eldoret uh, Shato na ilifanyika saa nane ya usiku na hiyo ngari ilianguka peke yake ndereva alipo jaribu kupanda runway ramp labda jaribu kunjiokoa kwa sababu uh, tunaonelea labda ni labda alikuwa amelala ama kushtuka lava akaona achukue eh, achukue njia ya dharura kuokoa watu lakini kwa bahati mbaya alipoingia ile rambu haikusaidia matatu eh, iliruka ikaenda ikaanguka pale pale hiyo nyingine na ikaumiza ikaua watu watano papo hapo hao wengine eh, karibu sita saba Survivors are still receiving treatment at the Molo Subcounty Hospital, while the bodies of the deceased are at the hospital mortuary. The wreckage of the Matatu was told to Molo Police Station. Most of them were soft tissue injuries. The child we are suspecting she has a head injury. That's why we are referring her. Uh, we have two men have uh, rib fractures, but they are stable. The area has for a long time been considered as a black spot along the Nairobi Nakuru Eldoret Road together with Ngata, Sobia Salga Stretch, Miga, Karai, Kinungi, Baruch, Gilgil and St. Mary's. <laughs> Tisha Josephine, TV47. <laughs> and the family and followers of Jesus of Tonga Ren find themselves at a crossroad after their leader, Elliot Bekesa, was detained for four days, starting from Friday. Speaking to a reporter, Sustin Wanji, the followers expressed their lives have abruptly changed since his detention and they are uncertain about what tomorrow holds as the case is said to be mentioned. Elliot Bekesa, also known as Jesus of Tongaren, will spend another day in the Bungoma police station cells as he awaits a decision on whether he will be granted bond tomorrow. The court has granted a four-day investigation period regarding the radicalization claims and mental health status of the New Jerusalem church leader. This decision was made on Friday. <laughs> At Ilhoho, a village in Tongarini constituents, the family and followers of Eli Duekesa, led by Nabi Benjamin, who is the wife, expressed that their lives have changed since the arrest of their master, and she is now pleading with the President William Ruto to come to her rescue. Na niko na kijana mungine kule kiambu, asa jana, ananitikia simu at mam, wamenifukusa kwa nyumba, landlot ya nataka rent, na baba yake hayuko. Asa mimi nitafanyaji, ata saa sielewi venya mtoto wanga kukule kiambu, Elliot Wekesa 
na wengine wanapelekanga vitina kwa serikali wanasema watoto wa Yesu hawasomi on sunday the church service was unusual as jesus was longer and sat remained empty the few followers who attended followed the normal procedures according to them The silence at the altar goes against God's will but they remain optimistic about their master's potential freedom tomorrow. Watamweka huru na kazi ya Mungu itaenda mbele kwa maana kila kitu ambacho kinatendeka. Haya ni mapito. Yeye akiwa kuani mkuu katika hii kanisa takatifu astahili akae nje kwa huo muta mrefu. A section of Bungoma County leaders is demanding the release of Eli Diwekesa on free bond, stating that he has not committed any wrongdoing. On the other hand, religious leaders have prayed the government's crackdown on suspicious churches and are urging for a revision of church regulations in the country. Ni mtu maskini kabisa. Ukimwekelea ya kwamba yeye anafanya money laundering. Huyo Yesu hata shilingi 1000 peke yake hana. Sasa tuko na baba wa Roma. Sasa na mutira Yesu wa wa Tongareni. Simshike baba wa Roma. Hey. Hey. Mwanzilie vijana mara moja na makosa. Hakuna mambo ati Yesu wa Tongareni. Huyo ni mtu ambaye ni chukizo kwa community wa Bukusu na Bungoma County kwa ujumla. Kama kuna makosa ambayo amefanya, sheria ichukue mkono wake. Lakini sio kusema kwamba sasa sheria zingine zinatungwa. Wanji Sostin TV47 Bungoma. Now a lady from Moranga town is crying for justice after she was allegedly viciously assaulted by police officers who left her nursing serious facial injuries. The lady, Miriam Wairimu, says she was assaulted by the officer who says is an ex-boyfriend, as our reporter Amid Yakub details. Miriam Wairimu, who reported the matter at Muranga police station, was left with a bruised, swollen face, eyes and lips, and she has been forced to put on a headgear to cover her injuries. Miriam, Miriam Wairimu, na jana, kuna uyu askari alikuja, haka nipiga, haka niambia, kuna kitu anaiza fanyiwa, haka nipiga, alikuwa nataka beshti angu, beshti angu haka mkata, haka kuja, haka nipiga kwana nipiga na nirusha kwa kichaka. Rimu says the officer started causing a scene and assaulting her during her birthday party at a local joint where she had hosted a few friends. In a surprise town of an event, she claims she later left to the officer's home to try to calm him down, but things got Kena worse. Kujua, ni ex wangu, lakini sasa vile alisikia niko na birthday, ndio akakuja akadandia ndio akaanza vita. Mm. Amenipiga uso, nimeumia kila mahali yani mwili. Mm. The officer is said to have dared her to report him saying that nothing will happen to him and could be seen roaming freely moving from one office to the next. A local rider Mohamed Omar attempts to intervene and rescue the lady left him counting losses. A journalist covering the story was also arrested and locked up at Muranga police station. Kujaribu as in kama msiwabai kwa siku sako. Siwezi kubali kuona kifuruga mwanamke nikiwa hapo. So kujaribu kumzuia ikakuwa ni vurugu. Aka ni vurugu pia mimi ameniharibia simu yangu. Ameniivunjia bike yangu. Na yet tusaidika. The county commander Matthew Kainga said the police have commenced investigation into the matter and if the accused police officer is found culpable, he will face the law. Amida Yakub TV 47 Now the temporary camp of refugees from Burundi and the Republic of Congo at Kitale showground is facing the outbreak of diseases caused by the severe cold environment a large percentage of children have become victims with one of them passing away last week and as Isaac Famba reports the government has been urged to expedite its efforts in assisting the more than 1,600 refugees who are currently suffering. It is a temporary refugee camp at Kitale showground. Despite being a temporary camp for the refugees, some of them have accepted the situation here and continued various activities to earn a living. 
They call the environment has posed a significant challenge leading to the outbreak of diseases, particularly affecting children, as growing number of people seeking refuge in the area intensified the situation. Na tatizo ni kulala mbaya. Tunalala mbaya. Tunalala watu karibu mia tano kunyumba moja. Tunapangana kama nguruwe. Indo nakuwa shida ambao tumekuwa nao sana. Na maji tumekosa. Mutu anaweza vua nguo, anaweza oga, hiyo yote inashindikana, imekuwa tatizo. Tumeza kudhuria kwamba wengi wao wanaugua na magonjo tunaita upper respiratory infection. Hayo ni magonjo ambayo naletwa na uh, infection ambayo ni kiini kinaingia kwa semi ya kupumua. Uh, tumepata uh, kama wawili watatu ambao walikuwa na pneumonia. Na manisho infection inaingia kwa semi ya uh, uh, mafua. Consequently, Calls have been made to the government and well wishes to provide medical aid to address the urgent need as lack of medicine and medical equipment remains a pressing concern that requires immediate attention. Our, the kids here are having a condition, they are sick, but uh, we don't have medication. And I want to call on the well wishers and any other person, anybody that feels that uh, he or she can assist these uh, people because there are some medicines that we cannot get them uh, from our dispensaries here. We need antibiotics, we need a number of uh, medication that the doctors have just given us a list of the medicine that we need to buy. I know we will not be able to buy all the medicine. We can only purchase some of them, but it is of need for now to ensure that these kids have been given medication as early as now. Accompanied by Transoya County MP Mrs. Lillian Sioi, Migori County MP Fatuma Mohamed, emphasized the importance of finding a permanent solution to the refugee crisis in respective countries, as Ms. Mohamed further urged the East African community to step forward and address this pressing issue collectively. Kile tumejionea hapa nila kusikitisha mno. Na tukisema kweli, tunakila umu ki East African community kwa nini atuwezi tukasaidia hawa wenzetu kuwapa chakula kuwapa malazi na pali pa kukimbilia sio suluhisho wala kutuma jeshi letu kutoka Kenya kwenda kwa nchi lingine sio suluhisho suluhisho wanajua kile wanapigania wakalishwe chini na majirani wao kama wakubwa ki, kiundugu manake Kenya tuko juu kidogo kiundugu sisi ndio tulianzisha hii mambo ya East African Community kwa nini tusitafute amani la kudumu Kwa nini tukubali wakimbizi wawe kwa inchi yetu? Tusaidie Kongo wapate kuishi kwa inchi yao. Isaac Famba, TV 47, Transoya County. Now, in recent years, Kenya has emerged as one of the top countries in Africa with a significant increase in internet users. The number of internet users has risen by over a million between 2021 and 2023. While the internet has undoubtedly made the world a global village, it comes with both advantages and disadvantages. In this piece by Moige William, we will focus on the disadvantages specifically addressing a popular social media application called TikTok. Stubbingly, some users on TikTok engage in provocative behavior such as dancing half naked or even stripping naked during live sessions. Have a look. Kenya has emerged as one of the notable consumers of the internet globally, with about 20% of its population actively using social media platforms. Facebook, YouTube, Instagram and TikTok are some of the popular social media apps used by millions of registered users in the country. Yes. These platforms offer users the opportunity to interact, socialize, and even transact business. Many renowned personalities, including influencers, brand promoters, and brand ambassadors have built successful career in this space. One of such personalities is Edward Kehara, popularly known as Only Lead Boy, a professional dancer who has leveraged his fame on TikTok to become a brand ambassador and make a fortune. Kiara is minting big money as a brand ambassador thanks to TikTok that introduced him to the world. With more than 2 million followers on the app with Chinese roots and which is common among teenagers, he managed to cover niche in the entertainment industry and become successful in pushing products through his dancing career. I'm only two, two platforms and just go active. 
TikTok and Instagram. TikTok and Instagram 2 million followers, Instagram 143k. So shooting to me, there's a money luck. I just got that I'm on the level, the level. So to me, I am moving. I can't let it continue. I'm not going His decent acts have earned him a reputation on the platform with over 18 million likes and several packs. Really, time will go so easy because they are all going as a questabu content creators. You know, see, cause I like there are a lot of people. No, no, when you wanna dance, so like say you guys are a lot too kiddo going as a pit. No, no, ju so many people. Na bado yingi no wanna grow. When as wanna kids wanna dance to the old age people. No, no. This is a part of the show. I have TikTok and dance. No shanga. No shanga. No one. So lucky me. Try for that. No be a shara. Any phone where camera don't need to be any kid dance. Guys, they both too active. Too active. Too active. However, a disturbing trend has emerged on these social media platforms where users share explicit content. Young people activate live sessions with music playing in the background and dance half naked, shamelessly exposing themselves to anyone who joins the session. Some even go to the extent of stripping naked, which by many standards is unacceptable. What is baffling is unlike Kehara, who is using these platforms to advance his image and manage to attract more potential clients for the ones sharing explicit content one would wonder in exchange for what. Unless it is sharing explicit content and engaging in immolarity under the guise of just here for fun. The lives, like when there's a part of one in here, wanna show the explicit, the bodies, wanna twerk in Guinea, you see. People are parading nudity on social media. There's even sex shaming that is ongoing. There are sex parties that are going on online. And people are not paying attention. The Kenya Film Classification Board, a content regulatory body in the country, has warned Kenyans against hosting explicit live streams of adult shows on social media platforms, noting that some platforms have turned into digital brothels where nudity is served in blunted breach of the law. Because like, wanaume wanapenda kwa wanavutuka hizi. So like, watu wengi wanakuwa flooded kwa. Waweza pata mtu kuna mtu wame follow you ajuu ya body shape yake, siya tijuu, ana ito this and this. Noona. And these things that are being normalized, the normalization of crime, the normalization of obscenity, the normalization of evil through content is what has led to this, where it looks cool to walk naked. It looks cool to say, to use an F word. And you find even a child using that on their parents, and it's on social media, it's on TikTok, and it's paraded as a way of life. Cyber psychologist David Mweping has called on African states to tackle the emerging issues in the internet world by coming up with specific laws and regulations to address cybercrime related offenses, he emphasized the children are greatly exposed to these new trends and urgent measures are needed to protect them. There are big tech companies, right? They do as they please in Africa. You know, they don't do as they please in Europe. Why? Because here, you know, our regulations are very weak. Um, you know, Facebook can take data, Google can take data and use it as it pleases, uh, but there's no action. So one, one of the things that we believe will really help us in Africa is if we do this collaboratively. You know, African governments need to demand accountability from these big tech companies. And some of these uh, social media platforms have become free for all. There is no regulation and they are destroying our children. We are allowing our children to be taken advantage of, to be misled. Some of them are being radicalized Others are getting into depression because that content that they are consuming, nobody is guiding them. And the deeper they get, the more difficult it becomes. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Guys, to go The Kenya Film Classification Board has warned social media users sharing explicit content that it will monitor different platforms and collect evidence that will be forwarded to the Directorate of Criminal Investigation. It stressed that the distribution of obscene films is outlawed and those streaming explicit sexual content on social media risk arrest and prosecution. However, the question remains, will this be enough to curb the alarming trend? end times. Like dunia to say like to weird. No, no. Like say like to free. Like tambo na kumukiwa shuluki hagumsichana vijeli kwanga. Yeah, ilikuwa ngumu wa tamdo na zenda kukusema. 
like say even it's not a big deal like world it's a bit too early involved it is time to reflect on it and i'm saying we must be radical it cannot be at a negotiation in the name of freedom of expression we must say nothing is more important than life nothing is more important than our children and let me conclude by saying there is no substitute for morality. Recently, Australia has been subjecting these big tech companies uh, to appear and justify, to appear before lawmakers and justify that which they are doing to protect children, to protect internet users. You know, we rarely hear of that. In Africa, you will see internet shutdowns, you see this and that. But there is a way we can, um, you know, manage the situation effectively um, as African governments by demanding accountability. It means a multi-stakeholder approach, demanding accountability from big tech companies in terms of the measures that they are putting in place to protect internet users. Internet penetration continue to pick pace in the world, more so here in Kenya, with new numbers of internet users being recorded on a daily basis. But one question that linger will protect the vulnerable, more so the children who at times are being exposed to dangerous content in different social media applications. Mwege William, TV 47, Nairobi. Away from that uh, incredible piece by Mwege William, President William Ruto has sacked Dr. Joswin Boru as the Principal Secretary in the State Department of Health. Ruto has also revoked the appointments of the Kenya Medical Supplies Authority Cancer Board. It's following a complaints alleging impropriety within cancer that affected the procurement of treated, uh, that is, mosquito nets meant for vulnerable households. Sharon Baranga with the details. It was a gloomy Monday for a number of high-profile officials in the Ministry of Health. Dr. Josephine Buru has become the shortest-serving principal secretary after being fired by President William Ruto. The move came following complaints on the regular verification of expenditure by the Global Fund with regards to the National Malaria Program that targets millions of low-income Kenyan households. Others who have been shown the door are the chairperson and members of the board of directors of the Kenya Medical Supplies Authority, KEMSA. That you don't think it is your business. Meanwhile, Ruto has appointed Erongo Nyakera as the chairperson of KEMSA. Dr. Andrew Motava has been appointed as the acting chief executive officer of KEMSA. Hezbon Oyeko Omolo, Bernard Kipkirui, Dr. Jane Masiga, and Jane Nyagaturi Mbatia will serve as board members. I want to give you my commitment. I will clean up KEMSA. Whatever it takes, Mr. President, whatever it costs. I will clean that later to the new changes at the Ministry of Health and KEMSA come as a result of complaints alleging impropriety within KEMSA that affected the procurement of treated mosquito nets meant for vulnerable households. Sharon Baranga, TV 47. All right, the government will not reverse its decision to scrap subsidies on key commodities even as the cost of living continues to rise. Uh, President William Ruto maintains the subsidy program is unsustainable and will not solve the current financial crisis facing the country. Chip Toboit for the details. The Jubilee government had in its twilight days rolled out several subsidy programs to cushion Kenyans from the high cost of living, a system that President William Ruto says is not tenable and will only strain the finances further. Wale majama walikuwa hapa mbele yetu, walifanya subsidy ile inaitua subsidizing consumption, walipeleka pesa kwa mamila. Mila hana maindi yake, mila ni chuma tuwa konayo na mashini. This is a signal that Kenyans will continue to pay more for common commodities as the government reorganizes its finances. Already, the cost of petroleum products has increased after the removal of a subsidy that was started one year ago. We are going to live within our means. Even if we have today delayed for salaries for two, three days, we will. So that people begin to internalize that we cannot continue borrowing. And let me tell you, I have had many people say, oh, you know, you can't tax, your, uh, there is no country that can tax itself into prosperity. <laughs> That's correct. Yeah? But you cannot accumulate the debt into bankruptcy as an option. 
The opposition has been urging the government to reintroduce the subsidies, arguing that Kenyans are facing hard times due to the high cost of living. Our public debt is in the region of uh, 8.8 .8 trillion, close to 9 trillion. IMF actually wanted us to borrow slightly more. I told them no. You know, I told them no, we are not borrowing. And that is why if you look at the fiscal deficit, you know, the money we are borrowing, we have reduced it from 1.1 trillion last year to 630 billion this year. We have reduced almost 500 billion. National Assembly Budget Committee Chairman Dindinyoro on his part says the opposition is politicizing the 2023-2024 budget making process, arguing that Parliament still has powers to amend punitive sections. The finance bill, the budget estimates, these are not dictatorial uh, booklets. They are not dictatorial documents. Anything that the Treasury brings to the National Assembly it comes there because National Assembly is a house of debate. And as we debate the, the finance bill and the estimates, the budget, we listen to the Kenyan people. We must agree that time is right. We sought scholarly public resources. We utilize public resources for the right parts. However, this is what Kenyans have to say concerning the spike in commodity prices. <laughs> Sisi watu wa chini ndio tunaumia na sisi ndio mnatupandishia sukari. Ungeomba loan kwa sababu ulipata ngombe kama ni mgonjwa. Utibu kwanza ngombe alafu ndio uanze kujitegemea kuanzia hapo. Mahindi kwa shamba saa hii iko mzuri inakuja mzuri sio kama ile wakati mwingine. So nafikiri kuanzia next year January hivi mwezi wa pili karama itakuwa imeruti normal. The cost of living is one of the main agendas being discussed by the bipartisan talks team appointed by President William Ruto and opposition chief Raila Odinga. And its recommendations on this specific topic will mean a lot to Kenyans. Chip to Boyd TV 47, Nairobi. All right, President William Ruto maintains that 3% housing fund proposal is not a tax, but a move to ensure more Kenyans live a life of dignity. Speaking to journalists during a roundtable interview, the President maintained that Kenyans will feel the positive effects of the Finance Bill 2023 if passed in due time. As a heated debate on the overtaxation as proposed in Finance Bill 2023-2024 continues, President William Ruto insists that the proposals will have a positive impact in the long run. On the issues surrounding the proposed increase in the VAT on fuel, the president says this will close the loopholes that could lead to manipulation in the margins that mostly led to shortages in fuel. Number one, because having differential uh, uh, rates one at 8%, others at 16%, poses a problem, an integrity problem. People use it as a loophole to manipulate numbers. Besides that, our president says the increase will lead to the collection of an additional 50 billion shillings, which will help in dealing with the roads across the country. I have removed on the same fuel as we add 8%, uh, yes. I have removed road 3%, uh, 3.5% three three uh, road development levy from fuel. I have removed 2% of uh, uh, IDF on the same fuel. And to balance it out, because it is the same Kenyan who is going to uh, pay uh, from their pocket, I have removed VAT 8% on gas and I have removed other taxes that I'm going to explain to you, about 10, actually 14 other taxes that I have removed to try and even so that we have a balanced budget. Okay. On the contentious housing front, the president reiterated that the proposal to deduct 3% of all employees' basic pay will not only ensure the dignity of Kenyans living in slum areas, but also provide millions of much-needed jobs for the struggling youth. He says his plan is to build 200,000 houses per year for the next five years, which will take Kenya to the next level. That's why I'm saying these 5 million characters, our children, you know, getting out of school, 
Don't you think it is a decent thing? <laughs> Don't you think it is, it, is, it is the right thing to participate in an exercise that helps our country, our young people, instead of uh, 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 engaging in crime, in, 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 in abuse of uh, drugs, to be part to get a job. This comes even as employers across the country say the new proposals could lead to job losses since they simply cannot afford. Elsewhere, university students drawn from Kakamega County have threatened to join opposition in the national protest following the leadership of President William Ruto as they claim they are oppressing Kenyans with taxes. They criticize the Ruto administration for the higher cost of living and excessive taxation imposed on Kenyans. The way William Ruto is taxing Kenyans is alarming. You cannot come and start telling even the workers of this country who are our parents to come to be giving 3% of their salary for savings for their houses. Yet some of us, we don't live in a bush. We have houses at home. So our parents are confused between paying our school fees and saving for houses, something that we already have. This, even as civil society groups slammed the government for the plan to reintroduce more taxes at a time when Kenyans are battling with the high cost of living. Kuweza kujikimu kupata angalau hela, tena serikali miangalia pia huko wata kuenda kuchukua, kuenda kutoza ushuru. Hili jambo la kushangaza, kutamausha, kuhudhi. Unapota kutoza ushuru ni lazima wakishia kwamba unaeka miundo msingi, unaeka nafasi na kuweka rasilimali za kuweza kusaidia watu kuweza kujinasua. The Finance Bill 2023-2024 is set to be discussed in the National Assembly. Flora Limoke TV 47. Being closed for a decade, the Kenya government has announced plans to reopen its border with Somalia within the next 90 days. Interior Cabinet Secretary Kithuri Kindiki made this announcement following a meeting with his Somali counterpart Mohammed Ahmed Sheikh in Nairobi on Monday. Along with the reopening three existing border points, Kenya is also considering the addition of a fourth border post in Wajir County. Wage William, details. Interior Cabinet Secretary Kiture Kindiki Monday played host to his Somalia counterpart internal security minister Mohammed Ahmed Sheikh, where high-level consultations took place. The outcome of the deliberations which the Defence Cabinet Secretary Aidan Duale was part of was to end the more than a decade-long closure of the Kenyan border following increased attacks by the Somali-based Al-Shabaab terror outfit. Interior Cabinet Secretary announcing that the government has resolved to reopen in phases the border points, an exercise which is to be undertaken within the next 90 days. And we have resolved that the border between Kenya and Somali, and Somalia will be reopened in a phased out manner within the, ninth, within the next 90 days effective today, starting with the Mandera Bulahawa border points. The border points located in Garissa, Mandera and Lamu counties remain closed during former President Uhuru Kenyatta's administration. Kindiki observing that the two countries will collaborate in enhancing border management. The deliberations noted the need to enhance cooperation and partnership between our two brotherly neighboring countries, purpose to address the challenges to foster regional integration. Though noting that Kenya and Somalia continue to experience both intra- and interstate security threats emanating from the Al-Shabaab terrorist group with increased prevalence along the shared borders areas, Cabinet Secretary Kindiki highlighted that the government plans to add a fourth border post in Ojia County. We are also in the process of relooking at a possibility of also adding a fourth border point which will give an entry point into Somalia from the Kenyan side in Wajia County. Also, the government of Kenya announced plans to ease and visa restrictions to facilitate movement between the two countries. We have been able to agree to review the arrangements in place to make it uh, easier for our people to move a bit more freely. Time frame of easing the visa measures so that the citizens of two countries can obtain easily and travel easily 
to the respective countries. Kendiki affirmed that the government of Kenya will continue to engage with the federal government of Somalia to develop and implement joint approaches and strategies cutting across social, economic and insecurity issues. Mwege William, TV 47. Now after Deputy President Rigadi Gashago vowed to flush out cartels in the tea, coffee and dairy industries, saying that they are behind the wars farmers have been facing, the country is now looking to tap into knowledge of coffee production and exportation from Colombia as it eyes being a major that is player in the sector. And as Micah Gongo reports, the second in command earlier Monday signed several MOUs with his Colombian counterpart Francia Elena Marquez Mina and deliberated on ways of boosting trade relation that is between the two countries. Deputy President Rigadi Gashagu and Colombia Vice President have deliberated on ways of boosting trade relations between the two countries, including the introduction of direct chartered flights from Kenya to Colombia, which will be an enabler for trade and investment. Gashagua said the country is now looking to tap into the knowledge on coffee production and exportation to Colombia as it eyes being a major player in the coffee sector. With a huge delegation from the coffee subsector to learn from the people of Colombia on the success of the coffee subsector. Your Excellency, I have explained to you, the coffee subsector was very thriving in the 70s and 80s, but has gone down due to intervention by middlemen who have come in, come in between the coffee producer and the consumer. The second in command had committed to working with the Kenyan parliament to comprehensively address the legislative, operational and other gaps in the coffee subsector. The two leaders also oversaw the signing of two memoranda of understanding that will enhance the working cooperation between Kenya and Colombia and also enhance gender equality and women empowerment. And the foreign debts of our countries must be worked on so that we can jointly support our nations which are suffering large amounts of loss and damage. Discussions are also on top gear to conclude the MOU on Sports Corporation and six other declarations. During her three days visit in the country, the Colombia Vice President will hold talks with DP Gashagua that will center on boosting trade and investment, sharing best practices especially on economic models for transformation of the two countries' economies and cultural exchanges. Our government is committed to further increase a two-way trade and investment cooperation between Kenya and Colombia by focusing on economic and commercial programs and promotion of business interactions between our two countries ranging from MSME sector and private sector and business management organizations. And uh, we are totally willing to join our efforts with you in the African continent. Currently, the Kenya government is collaborating with the Colombian government in various sectors, including agriculture, environment conservation, science and technology, culture and education. Gashagua hosted the Vice President of the Republic of Colombia, Francia, Elena Marquez Mina, for bilateral talks at the official current residence in Nairobi. Mike Kagwongo TV 47, Nairobi. All right, welcome back. And uh, that is welcome back from the stories. And we now shift gears to the conversation. I say welcome back because we have changed position. And of course, the gentlemen that joined me for this very conversation are here. Only one is on his way. Once he gets here, then we'll get into it or we'll swing into it. Allow me to introduce them. We have Daniel Orogo, who's seated right next to me. He's a governance expert. Thank you so much for creating time to be here with us. It's the boys from CIA <laughs> County. <laughs> boys from CIA County, right next yeah. to Daniel yeah. Orogo is none other than Kevin Osido, who's the Executive Director, County Governance Watch. Uh, I saw him speak uh, to the address of the President almost immediately after it, when it was heated 
Yeah. And I think, uh, well, it's still heated. We can uh, speak to two, three things that the president articulated during this roundtable interview and so much more. And many said, oh, government Yaruto, Haina, plan ya kupigana na corruption. Osido was one of the first people who kept on saying, let them tell us what they want to do with corruption and all that. I don't know whether what happened yesterday was a clear show that this government is set to deal with corruption or not. We take a quick short break and then we come back and engage this gentleman on that. They are contented that this government is set to deal with corruption in the country or not. Your health is not just about going to the hospital. Your health is about prevention, it's about what you eat, it's about where you live. For this reason, the Body Garage Show exists. The part of the brain that <coughs> deals with communication. It's called primary hypertension, which means that we don't find a reason for that. Join me, Dr. Chepsi, every Thursday, 8 p.m. Radio 47, Tukunawe Mchana Kutwa na Usiku Kucha. Tisini na tatu nukta nune, naro. Wakati mwingine kama weekend ah mimi najiachilia. Mhm. Hata ukumbuki history. Nikifika watu wangu tawakinipokea na kupokeleka. Umeset the mood. Nimeset the mood naweza kupokeleka. Nikisema kwamba mzima popote pale ulipo nikikukaribisha. Katika kipindi mfahamu kiongozi jina langu Elizabeth Mtuku na katika kipindi mfahamu kiongozi tunakupa nafasi kutengamana nao kila siku ya Alhamisi kuanzia saa moja unusu kuendelea siku nyingine tutapatana papa hapa umjue kiongozi mwingine jiunge nasi toka hapa difuni mwa bahari hey. meli yetu takaputwa nanga kwa uhondo ribo ribo ya riwaya hii mwisho wa kosa monika it's early morning in maralal start your morning informed educated, entertained, and above all, know your country. From the beautiful plains of Samburu County to the skyscrapers of Nairobi, Morning Cafe certainly got you covered. Indeed, a beautiful place to watch and certainly a moment of understanding and knowing your country. Indeed, to the remotest parts of every county. Join me, Linda Alela, every weekday from 6 a.m. to 9.30 a.m. The diversity of Kenya's wildlife has garnered international fame. Break through this barriers and become the most renowned female. Wakati mwingine kama weekend ah mimi najiachilia. Hata ukumbuki history. Nikifika watu wangu tawakinipokea na kupokeleka. Umeset the mood. Nimeset the mood naweza kupokeleka. Nikisema kwamba mzima popote pale ulipo nikikukaribisha. Katika kipindi mfahamu kiongozi jina langu Elizabeth Mtuku na katika kipindi mfahamu kiongozi tunakupa nafasi kutengamana nao kila siku ya Alhamisi kuanzia saa moja unusu kuendelea siku nyingine tutapatana papa hapa umjue kiongozi mwingine jiunge nasi toka hapa difuni mwa bahari hey. meli yetu takaputwa nanga kwa uhondo ribo ribo ya riwaya hii mwisho wa kosa hey. Hey. monika hey. 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 
it's early morning in Maralal. Start your morning informed, educated, entertained, and above all, know your country. From the beautiful plains of Samburu County to the skyscrapers of Nairobi, Morning Cafe certainly got you covered. Indeed, a beautiful place to watch and certainly a moment of understanding and knowing your country. Indeed, to the remotest parts. No ordinary region. And of course, they call me the eagle. Wakati mwingine kama weekend, ah, mimi najiachilia. Hata ukumbuki history. Nikifika watu wangu watu wakinipokea na kupokeleka. Umeset the mood. Ndio umeset the mood naweza kupokeleka. Nikisema kwamba mzima popote pale ulipo nikikukaribisha. Katika kipindi mfahamu kiongozi jina langu Elizabeth Mtuku na katika kipindi mfahamu kiongozi tunakupa nafasi kutengamana nao kila siku ya Alhamisi kuanzia saa moja unusu kuendelea siku nyingine tutapatana papa hapa umjue kiongozi mwingine jiunge nasi toka hapa dufuni mwa bahari hey. meli yetu takaputwa nanga kwa uhondo ribo ribo ya riwaya hii mwisho wa kosa hey. <laughs> monika <laughs> Mo hey. <laughs> it's early morning in maralal start your morning informed educated, entertained, and above all, know your country. From the beautiful plains of Samburu County to the skyscrapers of Nairobi, Morning Cafe certainly got you covered. Indeed, a beautiful place to watch and certainly a moment of understanding and knowing your country. Indeed, to the remotest parts of every county. Join me, Linda Alela, every weekday from 6 a.m. to 9.30 a.m. The diversity of Kenya's wildlife has garnered international fame. This is a pellets that we give to the tourists. The Babu new Saidizi, Naina Saidizi. Wakati mwingine kama weekend ah mimi najiachilia. Hata ukumbuki history. Nikifika watu wangu watu wakinipokea na kupokeleka. Umeset the mood. Umeset the mood naweza kupokeleka. Nikisema kwamba mzima popote pale ulipo nikikukaribisha. Katika kipindi mfahamu kiongozi jina langu Elizabeth Mtuku na katika kipindi mfahamu kiongozi tunakupa nafasi kutengamana nao kila siku ya Alhamisi kuanzia saa moja unusu kuendelea siku nyingine tutapatana papa hapa umjue kiongozi mwingine jiunge nasi toka hapa dufuni mwa bahari hey. meli yetu takaputwa nanga kwa uhondo ribo ribo ya riwaya hii mwisho wa kosa hey. Hey. monika hey. Mo hey. <coughs> it's early morning in maralal start your morning informed educated, entertained, and above all, I have to go to the global fraternity. Mm -hmm. I just won two, three cases. So welcome back. The hashtag is Morning Cafe at Linda underscore TV 47K. This is Morning Cafe. And we get to the discussion. As earlier mentioned, we have Daniel Rogo as well as Kevin Osido as we get into this conversation. Um, most of the times guided by the stories that are taking center stage in the country. And I think uh, we are good to focus on this. I don't know whether, gentlemen, we engage you on the president's uh, interview. I think it's what makes uh, you know the better part of this week in terms of conversations and to the key things that he alluded to, mm -hmm. or perhaps the questions that he was questioned and responded to. One of the key things is on the question of tax, uh, which continues to be here. But even before it gets to that level, I mean, uh, even before we discuss the finance 2023 bill or the uh, 2023 finance bill, the prices of fuel are here. Yeah. The highest record ever in history. Done. Um, good morning, Linda. Good morning. Uh, I think it's... Um, um, let me begin to note that... Uh, Probably now we uh, can confidently confirm that we, the nation that is a taxing nation, mm. if to use uh, if there is a phrase like that, yeah. uh, you know, uh, that is existing. Um, uh, 
I think economists have uh, given some warning before mm -hmm. and uh, red flags have been raised that of course we can't tax our way to prosperity mm -hmm. um, in the background of uh, a sinking wage bill and uh, you know the national debt that has hit 8.8 uh, .8 trillion um, already and of course uh, you can hear that there is more uh, the members of parliament through the influence of executives might be uh, you know, debating or even to uh, increase that kind of computation, yeah. you know, because then there is a limit, there's a ceiling. But I think Kenyans, uh, the Kenyan, the, the nation has surpassed. Um, in the background of these, um, I think the, it came as a surprise yesterday uh, that even as there was a public discussion, discourse on the uh, commitment by the head of state through his, you know, uh, press engagement, mm. you know, over the weekend, as Kenyans were still grumbling with the taxes, you know, <laughs> you know, on various increase of housing levy fund, uh, you know, um, the 35% VAT. And then yesterday is, uh, again, uh, over 16% attributed to, uh, you know, uh, the, 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 the rise in fuel prices. Mm -hmm. But what is the implications of this? The implications of this is that wherever you, there's a rise in fuel prices, then it, Definitely, there is a rise of other prices of other commodities yeah. all over. Um, and, and, and I think it could be important also to understand uh, that just recently, I think a ship has docked from, you know, United Arab Emirates mm -hmm. uh, that has, you know, shifted tons and tons, uh, you know, of uh, petroleum mm. to this country. Um, in the background of this, we have also seen the president taking a back, you know, um, withdrawing his commitment. Mm to whether, you know, uh, is, it, is it taxing of uh, gas cylinders or taxing, yeah. you know, reducing taxing <laughs> of the gas cylinders? <laughs> <industry. laughs> but, but, but the, the so, problem was see, categorical. Those are, those those are the that, things yeah. that uh, we really need to put into perspective because there's always a change in goalposts whenever the government is put into task. Yeah. Whether to explain, you know, their commitment uh, and they're taking a detour of the uh, campaign pledges. Mm. The Kenyans, beyond just being confused, I think this station is just the nation is thrown into in a situation of confusion where yeah. you know uh, what what really uh, institutions really guarantee uh, the safety security and dignity of kenyans when mm. it comes to you know them playing a part in you know the economic contribution to this country linda mm. yeah. and and and, and epra says that this of course uh, has been triggered by the fact that then there's the lift of the subsidy and uh, the president, on the other hand, says that, well, subsidy is a no, 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 uh, if at all we want to get that turn around. Um, most of the times, and this is just an analogy, you are told to manage the situation until you get to a point of solution. Is this the best way the government can manage the situation? And in managing, you are told, try your level best and make sure that you, you know, resuscitate, make sure that these people are alive until you get to the next destination of food. By the time we get this turnaround, will we be having Kenyans to enjoy that? Uh, thank you so much, Linda. I think that uh, our government is a government that uh, unfortunately is not keen to listen to the sound mind of the common citizen. Mm. And that is really the hustler that uh, is purportedly supposed to have been at the back, the backbone, really, of this particular government. I say this because if you look at a number of actions that are being taken, including this, this one on uh, oil and gas, particularly fuel, diesel, and uh, kerosene, <laughs> looking at the costings, really, mm. who is the government uh, addressing and whose interest is the government taking into account. Mm -hmm. There must have been missteps in my view in so far as the review of some of these um, processes and actions are concerned. One is failure to have a conclusive conversation mm -hmm. with oil marketers. Yeah. Now Kenya does not produce oil and uh, we have made attempts for example in uh, Turkana I don't think we've been very clear around where that mm -hmm. is. Mm -hmm. But to the extent that we are relying on global mm -hmm. uh, market companies, mm -hmm. the government of Kenya has to listen to our context and our environment. Yeah. So that even if there are issues in borders outside Kenya, for example, you can adduce this to the war between Russia 
and Ukraine. Ukraine. What does that mean to us? The discomfort and the conflicts in Sudan, what does that mean to us as not just as, as a country, but indeed as a region? So what if we went further and compared our oil prices to Uganda, mm. to Tanzania, to Ethiopia? Would we also be having similar excuses? Would we also be having similar uh, conversations? Because indeed the oil that goes to Uganda passes through Kenya, mm -hmm. Nairobi here, all the way to Busia. Are, are Ugandans also feeling this same pinch and hit like Kenyans are feeling? I think the government is uh, moving towards a direction of really minting up to the last coin that it can be able to mint and get from macro sectors. And part of those macro sectors is the transport industry. Mm. Now, how to do it? I think government is imagining that uh, if we can be able to increase the cost of uh, fuel and diesel, then we can be able to get the money that we are looking for. Mm. But is that the best way to do it? I don't think so. Number two, on the issue of subsidies. Of course, this has been an ongoing conversation. But I think the Kenya Kwanzaa government, as opposed to the former government, of course, that is now a former government. Mm. It has no locus in this conversation. But why did the President Turu Kenyatta government decide to put subsidies? Mm. There must have been a reason. And that was purely meant to cushion the effects of a number of issues mm. that we are currently uh, facing, including the fact that most of the Kenyans are even not able to buy the kerosene that we are talking about. Mm. Against the wars and the talks about last mile connectivity, ensuring that every household has electricity and has power, mm. because that way now you are able to cushion yeah. Kenyans. But to the extent that if you look at the Kenya National Bureau of Statistics uh, data, not many households have alternative sources of energy. Mm. So what they have is diesel, or I mean kerosene. So government therefore needs to be keen to look at the data of Kenyans who are benefiting on subsidies mm. as opposed to those who are going to be losing. Because the fact that uh, the fact of the matter is that if you raise the cost like now has it's been done, and this is perennially ongoing. We have seen uh, oil marketers also making speeches, uh, speaking to the media and informing Kenyans around some of the effects. And yeah. as uh, my good brother Orogo rightfully said, you increase the cost of oil, it means that there are going to be repo, repo effects. Mm -hmm. For example, one, households will not be able to buy kerosene. So it means that children are going to have uh, to, to do with nyangile, but even nyangile, which is this koroboi, it's like, kerosene. It's kerosene. Mm. So it means that homework will have to be done before it is dark. Yeah. It means that for areas where people are using uh, kerosene to cook, mm. you will have to use the uh, firewood, firewood which yeah. now boils down to President uh, Ruto's issues around climate change mm. and anti logging, and, 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 uh, anti -logging yeah. and also planting how many. Uh, five, of five, five million, five yeah. million trees. Where yeah. is the president taking us to? Mm. The president has to be very clear around his agenda. But, but my so thinking that is, is this that whole, this whole thing uh -huh. in a holistic manner. It's it, it, quite a delicate balance. First mm. of all, um, what you have acknowledged is that yes. uh, you know the prices of oil or the prices of fuel are determined <clears> globally. <throat> That also is one thing that we cannot overlook in as much as we ask ourselves, is it the same impact then in Tanzania, in Uganda, or there's something there in between that we're not doing right. But equally yeah. subsidies mm -hmm. are supposed to be short-term remedies mm -hmm. in my own understanding. So until when, it's as though Kenyans want the president to, to, to look at subsidy as a long-term remedy to this problem. Which, which, which I think, you know, um, and you see some of these uh, conversation, Linda, it's uh, we, we as, as Kev has talked about that, you know, when a government policy is imposed, then I think it's looked on a different lenses. Mm -hmm. I think the issue of subsidy, and you could see even from the campaign that Kenya Kwanzaa was really totally mad about, you know, um, the imposition of su subsidy you yeah. know, uh, in, in the petroleum products and all these. When the president, the former president uh, had, and, you know, the last government, you know, try to cushion Kenyans again mm. is, you know, um, the cost of living and, you know, just to try to remedy the situation. I think for me, I have seen this from a point of one, a political statement, uh, because there was a pledge right way before to deal with it. Yeah. 
Uh, we, I, we kept questioning even on the panel last time, mm. asking, was these the decisions that was, you know, soberly, you know, canvassed, yeah. uh, you know, by the economic experts that were mm. assisting the government, and, mm -hmm. you know, the economic advisors, Dr. D and the rest, right. who were really against the subsidy because probably they thought that it was not really, you know, in line that it yeah. be done mm -hmm. by that time. And then secondly, um, for me, I'm, I'm always very sensitive when I see the multinational corporations and you know uh, institutions mm -hmm. and financial uh, you know facilities advising the country mm -hmm. uh, towards economic resuscitation and you know um, economic policies. Normally, I see the government having a conversation with the World Bank or the IMF. Mm -hmm. or, uh, you know, then the next thing I actually see is a lifting of some of the policies because it is attributed to an advisory yeah. by the multinational institution and financial facilities. Mm. We are just expected to borrow from African Development Bank. Another, you know, um, uh, you know borrowing that the Kenyan government uh, pledged and is on a public domain. Mm. But of course, we've received advisory as well from IMF and they will not accept that we have subsidies actually again mm -hmm. because then their issue is then how would they advise kenyans and kenyan government to broaden the tax base mm -hmm. and one of the ways of broadening tax base is you know dealing away with subsidies mm -hmm. but so, 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 so know, would we taxing, say that the, the, you know, the president was not uh, honest when he says that we are kenyans and he's the president and therefore IMF, World Bank would not dictate some of the activities. Would we say that he was not honest? I, I, I definitely agree that there's no honesty in this because okay. the, the president has admitted time and again that you see some of these declarations, you know, when now they now get to the government, they find out that either mm. uh, some of the laws do not allow them, you know, yeah. uh, to make some decisions as opposed to when they were campaigning. Mm -hmm. And I think even from the last interviews, uh, you know, uh, colleagues were asking why has there been a shifting, a drastic shifting on some of these proposals. Positions, yeah. and, and, and he admitted that, you see, we are finding out that, that we some legal actions, some laws, do not allow us, mm -hmm. you know, to, to, to make decisions as we, as we, as we thought before. And, and, and but, is but, then... but also, again, as, as Kev has mentioned, comparatively, um, some of these decisions, and, and I, I even think if we are really alive to the fact that, are we conscious about what is happening regionally? Mm. You know, um, and as much as some of these issues and excuses have been attributed to the war in Ukraine, mm. you know, why there's a sudden uh, rise in the cost of living, you know, the regional instability, uh, you know, the war in, in Sudan, yeah. uh, you know, um, and other neighboring. But I think we are obliged as a country, and, and I have seen this, uh, Linda, mm. people, members of parliament, senators, have helpedly protected you know, the declarations and decision by the president. And you know the narrative that I've seen even on the papers, that you see this is not a tax, but it is a saving scheme. I think, Kev, you've seen that kind yes, of yes, narrative. Yes, 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 yes. And, and it's, it's and, going on. And it's the on president on. himself yeah, who said and, and, to it. Yes. It is the president And, 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 and he started thing. that conversation. Yeah. And, and that narrative has been picked by a number of you know, affiliates and, yeah. and, and that kind of. Mm -hmm. And I think it is important because then, how then would it be a saving scheme mm -hmm. in the guise of broadening a tax base and taxing yeah. you know, um, the people that you really pledge to protect so dearly? I am interested to know, really, um, uh, taxation of, uh, you know, um, what, what you're calling artificial air. I think that that was the hair that was you, your taxing, cosmetics. Mm. Mm. And who does this business if okay. not the hustler nation? Okay. I'm, I'm really interested to know exactly what is the, the issues of turnaround, you know, in the current government as opposed to their pledges. It's been a matter of insecurity and dishonesty. Okay, I don't yeah. know whether we are being hard on them. And I mean, Kev, at some point you have made decisions and then somewhere along the way you think, okay, well, well, I thought this is going to take me to this direction. It looks like it's not promising. How about mm. I change my mm. mind? Mm. And they say it's only a fool that doesn't change their mind. Mm. I don't know whether it's wrong for the president to say that, you know, we will really get into the bottom of understanding these taxes on, you know, fuel, taxes on oil, taxes on, you know, petroleum and all that. And then somewhere along the line, he says, well, 
how about we impose this 16 percent because clearly there is a problem and for us to get a lasting solution we have no choice but to go this way but before you respond to that allow me to acknowledge the presence of the honorable Gigi Kagombe who is the member of parliament Gatundu South how are you wali wali same protest votes <laughs> no, we are not protesting. We are just, uh, we're just, just, we're just, we're just, we're just participating <laughs> in, <laughs> in democratic elections. Exercising and, your and, right and to vote. And we exercised our <laughs> right to vote. And we're not the media that, that labels that. You know, you, know, you know, a lot of times, and I keep saying, the yes. media pretends not to be politicians, but I think the most uh, ardent politicians are, are the media people. Once you're given the mic, you create a narrative <laughs> and you call it. Now you say that we are protesting against them. No. We voted in a certain way yeah. because, and that is the exercise of a democracy. Mm -hmm. You vote mm -hmm. and uh, you deal with the, with the way you voted. Okay. And the consequences. You deal with the consequences. And you know, you know I like, I like <laughs> the conversation. At this point. Uh, I, like the com I like the conversation that we have. You know? Yeah. But you know, when I was in high school, we used to have some people who were anti-establishment, anti-system, and they, they look so cool. Mm -hmm. It was so cool for those guys who even dropped out of school. Yeah. So you go to the village and find them, uh, raising dreadlocks, just sitting around Tani, uh -huh. smoking, doing all those things. And it looked so cool, you know? Yeah. And it was so cool for them to say that, you know, Apana, sisi atutayu kusoma, yo maneno ya mwalimu atuskizi. But there are people like us who did the right thing. We said we'll stick in school yeah. and do the right thing. Now, when you look back, then you realize they actually, that thing that looked so cool was actually not so cool. Mm. We have a government, we have a country. And some of the decisions that you find the president making yeah. are not going to look cool at all. It will be like going to school at that time. Right. People will want to come and make noise by the roadside and say, oh, you know, we're not going to pay tax, we should not do this. And it looks so cool. Mm. But do we have a country? Yes. Do we have a responsibility as a people to uh, grow our country and make sure that it is, uh, is moving on properly that it, like it should be? Yes. Yes, we do. Mm -hmm. Do we have hard times economically? Yes. But what do we do? We must balance the two. And me, for me, the conversation to have really is, is whether the money that we are giving to the government to, uh, in terms of taxes is being used in accordance with the law and is being used properly. You know, that's a conversation to have. Mm -hmm. But it's not whether we are going to pay taxes or not. Mm -hmm. That conversation shall not be on the table. You know, on the issues of, of subsidy, because I've had you allude to that. Yeah. And I know it looks so bad. Huh? But you know what we've been doing. What is subsidy? Who gives subsidy? It is a consolidated fund. Mm -hmm. So who take, where, where does the consolidated fund come from? Um, it's from the taxpayers. Yeah. So it's a game of, you know, it's just a game that we're playing. Actually, I'm the public accounts committee and I'm in the agriculture committee. We failed to pay the subsidy that was paid for UNGA. When we came in this new government, we sat, as people from uh, both sides of uh, government, both the minority and the majority, we sat and said, it is not possible to pay this tax uh, subsidy. subsidy. Because the 4.2 billion, 4 billion that was left, and you saw me on TV telling those people that we're not going to participate in mm. rubber stamping yeah. for corruption that happened. And you know, you know we must be honest with ourselves. You're saying that we put an UNGA subsidy. How does an UNGA subsidy happen? You know how our, our milling happens. You come from a miller, miller sells his produce to, to his UNGA to a, a super distributor. The super distributor sells to a distributor, a distributor sells to a stockist, a stockist sells to a wholesaler, a wholesaler sells to a retailer, the retailer sells to the end user. Yeah. So the government comes and says that we've given a subsidy and we have subsidized one miller, say miller A. Mm. So we've given you money so that uh, when the UNGA leaves your stock or leaves your gate, leaves at, at the price of 90. Mm. But we had no way of making sure that throughout these other six uh, levels of value addition, that this has been taken off, uh, care of. Yeah. And that's why you find that no, the Mwanaenti did not end up benefiting from this subsidy. Mm. We have seen, and I'll tell you things that are practical. I come from a village uh, economy. I come from a constituency where we farm and do everything. It is very hard for me to say that. In fact, I'll tell you, during campaigns, there was no way that anybody got that subsid uh, subsidized UNGA. Because I cannot tell someone to come from uh, one corner of my constituency to Gatundu town, for example, to come for one packet of unga. Mm -hmm. And that's how we purchase unga. But one person can come for a 50 uh, kilograms bag of, of fertilizer, yes. and it will make sense for them. And by the way, that unga is sold at my office. Okay. I've just given uh, NCPB a room because we did not have, we looked for some space, mm -hmm. and they brought an officer. Mm -hmm. And I can tell you that one of the 9.2 billion uh, shillings that uh, the president was saying that we have paid, which is not saying it is true, mm -hmm. 
we have farmers who bought uh, uh, fertilizer worth 9.2 billion shillings mm -hmm. from my constituency. I can tell you that 2,400 bags as at yesterday morning had been bought mm -hmm. by farmers, you know? Mm -hmm. So this is something that you can account and see that this subsidy for, uh, for farming, uh, for uh, fertilizer, actually got to the end user. Okay. We even know, we have mapped up, you know, we have mapped them out, you know which farmer bought when and what he went to do with that fertilizer. And that is going to be, have an impact in the economy in the coming days. Okay. So, you know, it is easy to make a lot of noise right now, but time is coming. And you know, change is not easy. And and even in your, in your domestic issues, even at home, there are times you must decide that things are going to be a bit tough. Mm -hmm. We will not uh, be spending this on uh, on ABCD. Kids may not like it, your spouse may not like it, but you know that in the end of it, you, have, you must have austerity measures to get to a certain point in, 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 uh, economically. So I, I say it is very easy to sit and criticize the government, but once you sit and once you sit in, on that seat and you're looking at issues and you have the interest of this country at heart, you must make very tough decisions at times. Tough decisions, uh, those ones are welcomed for sure because mm -hmm. like I started by asking you, these are things that we do even in our own special homes, in our own offices. These are decisions that we make. Perhaps they have failed in terms of how they communicate this or would you agree with what it is that Moshimiwa says? Uh, the Kenya Kwanza government is a venting government. Mm -hmm. And I say this or I say that if you look at the narrative around the campaigns, they were very clear around what needed to be done. Mm -hmm. They seemed to be operating and, at a point of understanding. And knowledge. And knowledge. Yeah, and that whatever that was missing was purely action, mm -hmm. the doability. Mm -hmm. We want to get there and do this. And they even Give told us, the us within the yeah. first 100 days yeah. this is going to happen. And it really baffles me now when I hear the president and some of the parliamentarians, like my good friend, who are in government, now twisting the seat mm. and imagining that Kenyans knew and that they are really aware and that uh, it is not their business to, to be informed, to, to have uh, a place to also speak. Mm -hmm. Because when Kenya Kwanza was campaigning, they held a number of public participation meetings. Yeah. They went to almost all corners of this country from what they have told us. Why is it so difficult to do a similar process with creation of awareness among Kenyans and ensuring that Kenyans also have a say in some of these issues that are now being changed? Subsidies or no subsidies, people must eat. Farmers, farmers must farm. So you put a subsidy because there is a gap. The government has not told us what the gap is. Instead, what we are seeing are actions that still continue to push that person at the last mile to the last end of the fence. Mm -hmm. And they have told us we inherited empty coffers. This was because of the handshake. Uh, we thought that we had laws to support what we wanted to do. When we got there, we realized we needed to change this law. Why are we experimenting? Mm -hmm. And by the way, Linda, because you spoke about tough decisions, and Moshimoa mentioned it, there is nothing wrong with telling Kenyans, vitu kwa ground, sivu namna tulivyo fikiria. So please just give us some little time, but as time is being given to you, show us certain actions. And those actions, I'll be probably repeating myself, should not be seen to be disenfranchising the people. Everyone, almost mm. everyone. <laughs> Fact of the matter is, for example, Linda, that most of these functions that government is aiming at, whether it's on agriculture, whether it's on productivity, even this housing fund, mm -hmm. are devolved functions. Yeah. I don't see clear conversations between national and county governments mm -hmm. on how to do uh, uh, the following one, enhancing on source revenue for county governments. Because for example, you don't need to tax people to build houses for other people in the future, mm. okay? Mm. Housing, policy level, national government. The implementation aspect, county government. Mm. What if we say, as the president was, right, was rightfully saying, we have our children in, on the streets, we don't want them to get involved in crime. Why? 
it, it means that we are actually over congesting Nairobi because the slums that he was mentioning are largely within Nairobi. Mm -hmm. How about going back to data and asking ourselves, where are these young people that are coming to Nairobi coming from? Then we go to that county and say, we want to create employment, yes. which is not necessarily putting up houses for our young men and women in Nairobi. Mm -hmm. So we say, for example, that we want to go to Muranga and they have uh, an issue with, the, with Maziwa. Mm -hmm. Put up a Maziwa industry so that you do this thing I hear people calling expand the tax base mm -hmm. by doing what? Creating employment. Mm -hmm. Then once you create employment, it, mean, it means that you have more people with money in their pockets and you can now be able to tax. Mm -hmm. And that is partly why government is discriminating taxation. Okay. Identifying people who earn 500,000 shillings and above and saying, mm -hmm. we are going to increase your taxes. Because they're imagining mm -hmm. that because you have a lot of money in your pockets, so you now need to move from that house that you are paying mortgage for. Because government is imagining that you have money which you have just kept in, in a bank mm -hmm. somewhere. Mm -hmm. They don't think that you are spending this money, you know. Mm -hmm. So if we can be able to diversify our sources of revenue yeah. for the government, for Kenyans, we will be having more people putting money into their pockets, which also means that the people like uh, Dan here, Ndugu Hapa, yourself, myself, and there's so many others who are supporting <coughs> our uh, people in the village, will also increase the support, which yeah. means that we won't have to rely on government subsidy on fertilizer. Mm -hmm. We'll be able to share the little money we have by our fertilizers. There are places in this country where as much as it is even raining, people cannot be able to plow. Mm. They, they don't have that capacity, mm -hmm. you know. So they are imagining that one time government will give us free food. But they forget that that free food, there are people who are being taxed and there are actions that government is taking which are actually disenfranchising to a certain number of uh, population mm. for you to benefit. And yeah. that's, so government wants to do a similar process for housing which is what it has been doing in agriculture because we have failed to build the capacity of our farmers. Okay. It is not enough to just give people fertilizers, uh -huh. but not helping them understand, for example, why must you keep planting maize, mm -hmm. which anyway government is going to import? Mm. Yeah? Why must you keep planting sugarcane and you have to wait for it to mature for more than even eight months mm -hmm. or whatever, 18 months that it takes, yet government is still going to, to, to import sugar. sugar. Why must you keep planting uh, a rice mm. in a hero and uh, other places, Mwea Tebere, yet government does not build the capacity of the farmers? Yeah. The kind of trainings I see happening, even by county governments, are largely driven by the farmers themselves. Mm -hmm. You don't see the investment by government okay. to be able to build the capacity of these farmers so that we are all speaking from an angle that Mwishimua is talking about. Fair enough. So subsidies, yes. Tough choices, yes. yes but government has failed to communicate its actions towards that prosperity that way. Mojibu, I'll allow you to speak, but uh, I, I want them to do that first. But even before you do it, we have to go for a quick short break and then come back on that very note and perhaps see whether what it is that he says makes sense. That is fine, you could tax, but what are you even taxing? Kenyans don't even have this money to tax, so what are we talking about when we're talking about tax after this break? Sasa sote tuko sawa Nchi moja inye usawa Tunasonga mbele pamoja Nobody's left behind One love, one people Sustainable health for everyone NHIF in a fight it's a me Strong as one Strong as one Usawa ni umoja Usawa ni upendo you hate Murderer! She killed the priest! That harlot's covered in the priest's blood! 
Natalia is fascinated by the story of Alta Grecia del Toro, a woman who was wrongly accused of murdering a priest 23 years ago. Wakati mwingine kama weekend ah mimi najiachilia. Hata ukumbuki hii story. Nikifika watu wangu watu wakinipokea na kupokeleka. Umeset the mood. Nimeset the mood naweza kupokeleka. Nikisema kwamba mzima popote pale ulipo nikikukaribisha. Katika kipindi mfahamu kiongozi jina langu Elizabeth Mtuku na katika kipindi mfahamu kiongozi tunakupa nafasi kutengamana nao kila siku ya Alhamisi kuanzia saa moja unusu kuendelea siku nyingine tutapatana papa hapa umjue kiongozi mwingine jiunge nasi toka hapa dufuni mwa bahari hey. meli yetu takaputwa nanga kwa uhondo ribo ribo ya riwaya hii mwisho wa kosa hey. <laughs> monika <laughs> Mo- hey. <laughs> it's early morning in maralalo start your morning informed educated, entertained, and above all, know your country. From the beautiful plains of Samburu County to the skyscrapers of Nairobi, Morning Cafe certainly got you covered. Indeed, a beautiful place to watch and certainly a moment of understanding and knowing your country. Indeed, to the remotest parts of every county. Join me, Linda Alela, every weekday from 6 a.m. to 9.30 a.m. The diversity of Kenya's wildlife has garnered international fame. This is a pellets that we give to the tourists, the giraffes. We ration because we don't want the giraffes to eat too much of this. We mm. want them to have uh, more of them. Uh, well. All right, we are back, gentlemen. You know, <laughs> uh, the conversation uh, does not end even when we take a short break, yeah? And so here we are with Daniel Orogo, uh, sure. Kevin Osido, and Mushimiwa Gigi as we speak to the matters that are happening here in the country in defense of the government. Mushimiwa is here. But then again, of course, uh, speaking for the people, Kevin is here as well as Dan. And Kevin uh, has been huge on the question of devolution. Uh, perhaps that's the reason why he asks just what relationship is there between the mm-hmm. aspect of devolution and uh, the national government. And true to it, the president himself was asked this, you yeah. know. Uh, do you have good will for devolution? He says he does. Yes. But for a moment, we have felt like, you know, there's the absence of activity at the devolved unit. Um, if we don't get it right on the question of devolution, do you suppose this government has the opportunity uh, to prove a point, has the opportunity to achieve all this that they had set in their mm. manifesto? Well, well, I, I think I think I, I, I have been considerate in mm-hmm. just trying to, you know, uh, be fair to the current uh, situation, uh, you know, the government I- is in, uh, you know, vis-a-vis what is expected of it as well. and. Uh, when we were here last time, mm-hmm. um, I, I really was of the opinion that we always have the annual devolution conference, yeah. you know, um, um, every time. And that to st- take stock of the performance of government, uh, you know, both governments, and how, you know, the constitution, you know, uh, we can account that the two governments have been complementing each other. Mm-hmm. And of course, um, the county government have given a good report on, on how, you know, devolution. And each and every devolution conference, you, the governor say, you know, this devolution works. And uh, there could be an attribution of the successes that have been there before. And of course, we've seen uh, that there had been some, you know, um, developments uh, in, in, towards the devolved system of government. Mm. But hugely, as, as was expected, that we, as there's been bad manners in the national government, devolution, you could devolve these bad manners as well. Yeah. Um, this government, for me, I see that, uh, you know, um, and Kev has alluded to this, that every time the government is put to task and, uh, you know, the head of state, and I want to be very fair in my assessment, uh, that the president would say a different thing, uh, uh, you know, when he's asked in the public domain vis-a-vis 
you know, what is really happening, you know, on the ground as well. Mm. Um, there have been a hue and cry in, uh, with the devolve, uh, you know, the, with the governors. Recently, the governors are ups in arms with the government, giving government ultimatums. Timelines and ultimatums. And timelines. Uh, towards, you know, even remitting some of the monies uh, to the divorce system of government and threatening. There have been threats of strikes, you know, um, you know, medics, mm. you know, um, and uh, government, uh, county government employees, mm. and basically questioning the government's commitment towards, you know, making devolution work. I would also like to say that, you know, um, Kevin, for me, I see a situation where it's not only a matter of communication, and how the national government communicates uh, the government agenda to the people. Mm -hmm. But I also see how they communicate it. You know, there, be, they, there could be communication. Yeah, and, but how and, do they and, package uh, it? How, how do they package it? <laughs> okay. don't leave, leave alone even how do they... <laughs> what yeah. how, what, what attitude is, is embedded when you are communicating the government you know, policies uh, to the people? Um, I have been privileged to you know, uh, see different and most Kenyans have been watching different debates by the members of parliament mm. and you know the honorable member is, is, is partly here probably to give us his view mm. but you see why do we have always the members of government affiliated to Kenya Kwanzaa you know uh, you know being portraying a sense of entitlement to the truth mm. right. you know that there is no any other truth apart from the truth they know yeah you know, and, and I'm very interested <laughs> when, when, when the member of parliament, you know, give us an analogy, uh -huh. which I really like the analogy, as, as you know, the, yeah. you know, the village That's professional. The village. <laughs> <laughs> who, who always thinks that, you know, yeah. there were truth were tell them. And it's true. We, Kev, we could sit somewhere always. Uh, we are privileged to be coming from the same county, yeah. you know, going to the same school. Mm -hmm. There had been a place in, in Sierra, a Hindi gardens, where there had been a very heated debate. Mm -hmm. It's like the hill yeah. around yeah. yeah. And yeah. people would go there to listen to certain <laughs> people. Uh -huh. Whether they say the truth or whether they lie, people would go home yeah. and, and, uh, and they're entitled to the truth. Mm -hmm. Which, of course, and much of this uh, truth would be misleading, as, 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 as you know, the MP had alluded to. Yeah. But again, on the other side, uh, we would look at this government and see that certain people in this government where you would be always be a reference point too. Mm -hmm. That there will be always a certain element of the truth. Why would there be, uh, you know, David D is entitled his own truth. Mm -hmm. Always. Why certain members of parliament, are, whether they are lying or saying the truth. Yeah. And I see, uh, you know, uh, the honorable member of parliament as a young person, as a vibrant member of parliament, probably which we could look up to. Mm -hmm. But I think the way he's trying to say that his truth is an entitlement to this, and I've seen the debates that he, he, he put through in the media yeah. and the floor of the National Assembly which I, I even plead for him to go back and really check, yeah. you know, have a, a, a fact check of, you know, the things that we've been pushing through. But I, I foresee a situation where the young people, the nation would be believing on him, mm -hmm. you know, to, to save the country. But of course, his, his, his tinkering of the truth is not the ultimate truth that we see. Yeah. This current government, you know, has, has got his facts so wrong. And as, 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 as Kevin was mentioning, why is there, the explanation is, why we are not interested in, you know, uh, why is they giving the government more time? Yeah. When indeed, there's been an entitlement towards if we put this Bible down, you remember that yes, phrase? Yes, yes, yes. If we put it down, then drastically make sure that we are not going to find an excuse, mm. as Kev has alluded to, that if we put this Bible down, everything, you we'll know, um, as opposed to what the last government did, would be a highway to the truth. But again, like I've said, is, is fair assessment. Mm. That's what I've said. There's some certain times where you find that you might have missed the point. Mm. You might have not really interrogated the contextual issues that you're facing. Yeah. And like Kevin is proposing, that you go back through a county consultation forums, like you know uh, the government, the Kenya Kwanzaa government was. Yeah. And, and I really agree that theirs was really a fact-finding mission. That was really well, because that was a consultation mm. to the people. And the fact is that they do not, they cannot say that we just find that for ground between the different. Yeah. There was a consultation. Okay. As the Mio did not have a similar consultation, Kenya Kwanzaa government did. So the departure was just to go back to the public consultation. But even how then would you go back and explain the truth okay. in the face of the taking a detour to some of the promises that you had? Yeah. We understand. Just give me a bit. We understand that probably issues are not really the way they thought. Yeah. 
But what is the contextual issues that we are facing right now? Okay. Let us say the truth. And, and, and Moshimiwa, I will come back with the very same, or I'll come back to you with the very same questions that the gentlemen are asking. And yes, you could be forgiven that, yes, things are not uh, the way you expected for them to be. Our one thing um, here is that you came on the backdrop of the question of economics, yeah, mm. and fixing the economy and all that. It becomes hard to forgive the president when he says, well, surprise, surprise, because he was part of the previous government. And I know you will argue that he wasn't part of it because of this and that and everything, that argument we've had. It is difficult to trust that when you see him proposing Dr. Kamau Thuge to take up the CBK, an individual that sat in this very government that he, he faults, and especially on the question of how they managed the finances. And so the same individuals you want to trust to come and handle it, if they did not handle it well, what makes you think the difference, uh, there's going to be a difference in this? Even worse is that when we're talking about tax, tax fine is a good thing, but Kenyans would want to understand why the sudden change. And if these changes are going to be implemented, what is the guarantee that there's going to be value for money that we can you know, say it's fine? Let us give you the benefit of the doubt. But these Kenyans themselves do not even have anything. So what is this that you're taxing? You know, in Luke 24, chapter 18, mm -hmm. uh, Luke chapter 24, verse 18, yeah. from 17 actually, Jesus walked to Jerusalem. And, and, and because politicians are fond of putting mm -hmm. wrong, mm -hmm. let me open, let me open that, let me open that. <laughs> uh, let let, let us just come back. I and, just and, 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 Allow us, allow us a moment. You check, you check as I speak. You know, yeah, you know yeah, that, that yeah. is for you who are doubting. <laughs> you don't even read the Bible. You don't even know what I'm about. You don't even read. But when, Jesus, Luke, was, uh, uh -huh. when okay. Jesus came to Jerusalem. Luke words, Luke words. And uh, uh -huh. Cleopas asked him, uh, he, he asked what was happening, and Cleopas asked him, uh -huh. are you the only stranger in Jerusalem, Jerusalem who doesn't know what has been happening? Yeah. You know? And I will pose the same question to Dan and ask him whether he's the only stranger in Jerusalem <laughs> who doesn't know that uh, when it comes to... Actually, it's Kevin who, who's wondering <clears throat> that uh, we are not giving uh, awareness, we are not telling people. I've not seen a president... Who's been as honest. Who has been as candid and who has decided to have a conversation with the people as the character. Yeah. And he's not afraid of sitting and asking and getting asked <clears throat> to ask questions live on TV. Yeah. We knew a lot of, and you know, you are people, you're in the media, and you know that you used to have uh, times when uh, you even go and you have uh, scripts and there are questions that you uh, are asked in a certain way. Mm -hmm. But you're saying, this is a president who sits and tells you, ask the question you want to ask, yeah. and I'll give you an answer. Right. And you've seen that, and you must give it to him. Yes. Now, number two, when we, I'm an economist mm. by training and by practice. And, and uh, in a situation, in a setup of macroeconomics, mm -hmm. a lot of things will not make sense to a lot of people. Yeah, and they shouldn't anyway. And, t and they shouldn't, because mm. that's why at times we decide to give people who have those positions and, and let them work. Yeah. And uh, when you understand an economy, and, and also I want to say this about the president, the current president, I think in the setting, as, as we are, I think he's the most experienced person in terms of governance. Mm -hmm. He's a person who's been in... Uh, uh, in the Ministry of Education, in the Ministry of Health, in the Ministry of uh, Agriculture. <clears throat> Agriculture. Mm. He's been a deputy president. Mm. He has understood this government properly. Yeah. And once you're in this government, at times you find that uh, there are some different cogs that run the machine. And you may realize, in terms uh, when you talk about uh, Kamau Thuke, you know we had a government that had a certain direction. And uh, when you disagree with them, then you had to move away. Then you realize that that person probably, and you know, we must be honest, the previous government, uh, somewhere we had a rift in the government. And uh, a certain side of government wanted to go this side, a certain uh, <clears throat> part of government was pulling the other side. Yeah. And when you do, when you're in such a scenario, you may realize that we had someone in that team that you may want to have in your team mm. because you had the same thoughts and you want to move with them. Yeah. But also say, this government, there are some things that must be done. Once you get to, but it's not by choice. If you are to do, if you're to, if, if you're required to have cabinet secretaries, you must appoint them. If you're required to have uh, principal secretaries, you must appoint them. Mm. And <clears throat> some of these people, and you know, people get to marriages and you marry a woman you thought was very nice. 
sometime uh, down the line you realize she might be probably the worst person you've ever met and you divorce her you let know? me speak on and vice versa <laughs> the man let me finish <laughs> the problem is that you put in the the, uh, the, the man the let me finish i was i was up, i'm not finished uh-huh. and, and 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 the same and, and vice versa It's the same thing you you have found that yesterday the president has fired some people he just hired the other day because you hire someone to do a certain thing then you realize some uh, months down the line we are not aligned So you go, you know, but they, I mean, and you cannot say, you know, unajua hii serikali huwezi enda kuzaa watoto wako leta hapa. Yeah. And there are no strangers we are going to get. You are going to appoint people who have been in this country. Mm-hmm. I, I mean, and people have independence of their heads. There are people who decide now I have this position and I'll, I'll, I'll move this way and decide to, to pull my own way. That's it. And, and I want you to be, I want to be very honest. I don't think uh, uh, the, 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 president and the current regime is as apologist as uh, Kevin would want to say that we are uh, government of just saying eh watch out to party type apana we have a guy who's saying listen <laughs> we that thing that you want us to do the, and the president has said we shall not do it mm. is someone saying it's not about we are not waiting no we won't we are not going to give the subsidy any longer we won't i've had the uh, off the camera and i don't know whether i should say this but Kevin said that i don't know this uh, fertilizer subsidy that people keep talking about mm. we Uh, even people buy their own fertilizer you know you know and i'm sorry do not expose your ignorance again in public please because you're my friend don't say that again in public because you're exposing your ignorance I mean, let me tell you the difference I mean. I'll tell you, the difference that a thousand shillings makes to my farmers in the tondo south is so humongous if they had you saying such a thing i don't think they would forgive you the difference a thousand bob makes in a bag of fertilizer It's so humongous. I told you I'm in the I'm in the board of KTD. Yeah. And we procure fertilizer for farmers. Mm-hmm. When like it happened last uh, last year, there was a subsidy that had not been applied. We applied for a subsidy and then the money did not come. Which was coming to five uh, to to there was a 500 shillings that was left. When we had decided to apply that subsidy last mm-hmm. month, mm-hmm. their farmers would not take home anything. We realized actually we could not recoup that money in yeah. at once. Okay. 500 shillings you know it's so much money because you're saying that that farmer for a whole month who's been picking tea shall not get anything at the end of the day mm-hmm. or maybe he was supposed to get 1500 now you've taken 500 he's getting 1000 you know so please don't play around with those with those things i, I want to play the devil that i want to play the devil that he will he will, he will, he will, he will <laughs> respond <laughs> okay fine fine all right all right fair enough we'll get it down to this point this <laughs> I am sure that these gentlemen are here because uh, they <laughs> merit and because they can yes. speak for themselves. Fair exactly. Fair I am not accusing someone who's not here. Yeah. I'm just telling you. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So number two, before you get an impact on any economic, you know, for example, when Kibaki came to power, he came and said immediately that uh, there, there, were, there were people who used to, to, to ply the Nairobi, uh, Mombasa, Malaba route. Yeah and lorries would carry as much as 32 tons, tons. Mm. at once and then what used to happen is that the cost of maintenance of roads used to be so high when he came and said that you and put way bridges and said they can only carry 15 tons a lot of people said now is there are problems now we are being run out of uh, out of uh, business, uh, business mm-hmm. and now abcd and a lot of people even uh, put their lorries off the road but what they didn't realize is that when we maintain the roads easily then there will be a benefit somewhere else mm. all right it took about three years for these people to say oh by the way now the government is now expanding the money that used to be used to re- repair these roads every time is now going somewhere else and there's somewhere that we can get business in other counties mm. in other spheres of of the economy mm-hmm. what the president is trying to do and understand and he understands the this hustler government we are for example saying and we know that uh, the cost of production is very high in this mm. country and we have unemployment by the way the biggest the greatest problem that we have in this country is not taxation mm-hmm. is unemployment is yeah. that the people who are asking to pay tax do not have as much purchasing power yeah. or as much disposable income mm. as you would expect mm. so for you to create the disposable income it's such a long journey because you know when a government sits here <clears throat> and says that it's going to create jobs you're talking of a, a child or, or a youth where Kevin Osido grew up in 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 Sierra yeah. County you mm-hmm. say yeah mm-hmm. and you're sitting here in parliament and making a decision for that person you do not know 
and you do not know what they want to do with their lives, but mm -hmm. you want to create an environment for them to thrive. Yeah. You know? mm -hmm. What that means, and, and we have a gazillion people who want to do a gazillion things. You know, we have 54 million people with different aspirations. One wants to be a pilot, another one wants to be a fisherman, mm -hmm. another one wants to be a hotelier, another, you know, different things. But you must create an environment where all of them are going to thrive. That means that you cannot have, this is not a fixed, this is not a, a machine that you just go and, and, this is not a radio where you just go and tune on uh, the TV and add the Everybody volume, you know. There are a lot of other things that are involved. And you cannot talk about the government in a very, in that simplistic way of saying, you, you know, uh, now it's been six months, the government has not done anything. No or the government is not communicating and saying, no, you cannot be that simplistic in running an economy. Mm -hmm. And we must, and you know, uh, uh, um, the, the gentleman called uh, uh, Monda from, uh, from, from India once said that when you walk the streets of, of any town, you find people making uh, tea by the street and, telling you, and giving you advice on governance and telling you how mm -hmm. to be a president and telling you how the president is not doing the right thing, right? Mm -hmm. They have, you know, they give you very, you know, detailed uh, examples <laughs> of how you should run a country. Yeah. Only to realize that they are not even able to make good tea. Mm. There's nothing they can do, <laughs> but they want to give you advice on governance. They cannot even make good tea. But people are you find people tea. in the streets, you find people watching football, and, and they see the guy on the pitch, and, and they say, you know, see, <laughs> eh, you know, or, or they see the goalkeeper and say, Sasa, you and Aruka, you pan issue lap chapter. This is you know, it's you know so easy. the one who started by it's so saying easy. that Ruto is the most qualified one. Yeah? Yes, you are the one who started by saying that and well, I'm, he's done this and that and everything. You know, on those bases. You know, when we say Messi is on the pitch, we yeah. know he's the most qualified. Yes. So when he doesn't score, you know that it was not possible to score that time. Uh. You just take it from him because you know that Messi is just good at what he Are does. you telling you know? us to accept <laughs> it? Is? Are you telling don't, us to accept so you know, it? Don't, don't be in the pitch. Uh, don't, be, don't be on the gallery uh, and start saying that the guy, Messi is on the pitch and you're saying, now look at Messi. Now he did not score. Uh, if it were me, I would have scored. Uh -huh. But anyway, that's on a light note. But I want to say that the, first of all, as it is right now, you know that we're still appropriating the budget that was done by the previous president. And you know that uh, the 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 the, the the appropriations bill is purely how you create policy on running the government. Mm. And this government has not even had the chance. The only chance we've had is to do a, a supplementary budget. And it was only one that we've now done. Eh? Mm -hmm. And the supplementary budget that we did, you know, we <coughs> cut the projected borrowing from 1.1 trillion to 500 billion, to 600 billion. So meaning that we have cut uh, a spend of about 500 billion so yeah. far. And we're saying that the budget that is going to come so that these effects could be felt some two, three years uh, to come. You must do something. You know, we have development that needs to be done. Yeah. For example, yesterday I was sitting with the PS uh, for roads and we're saying that after the committee on pending bills sat, we realized that the government owes uh, about 159 billion. Yet the government only appropriates in, in, in the three, uh, the Kura, Kera and Kenha, appropriates 59 billion in a year we have a pending bill of 159 billion. It would be so easy to sit here and do, let's invoke the provisions of Article 223. Mm. But we said, no, we are not going to do that because then this becomes a moving target. Yeah. We must stop, stop it. And to stop it, it means that there are some things that must be, this government, we've said, we will not uh, go and tell people that we have this pro new project that we, we shall start. And we know, <laughs> for example, we said as a government, we shall not start any, initiate any new project especially for roads mm. and such infrastructural projects because we first finish the old ones because it's still public money. Okay. So you may, it may be so nice to come and say, you know, we are the ones who did this road as opposed to the other government. And now, you know, they, they have never said that they will do this road. No, they're like, no, 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 we'll be, we'll be candid enough to say, okay, we first finished this road that was started by this gentleman. And then, and then let me finish. He, uh, Kevin, and, and, Kevin, and, and, and I'll not Kevin, even allow you to finish. Kevin, I will not allow you, you to finish because you have a commercial time. break. We have to yes. take a commercial you break and then come back on that. Yes. And this yes. gentleman needs to respond to yeah. you. After this shot, no, 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 after this shot. <laughs> <laughs> Are you owed money?
wakati mwingine kama weekend ah mimi najiachilia mm-hmm. hata ukumbuki history nikifika <laughs> watongo tu wakinipokea na kupokeleka u set the mood u set the mood <laughs> naweza kupokeleka nikisema kwamba mzima popote pale ulipo nikikukaribisha katika kipindi mfahamu kiongozi jina langu Elizabeth Mtuku na katika kipindi mfahamu kiongozi tunakupa nafasi kutengamana nao kila siku ya alhamsi kuanzia saa moja unusu kuendelea siku nyingine tutapatana papa hapa umjue kiongozi mwingine jiunge nasi toka hapa dufuni mwa bahari hey. meli yetu takaputwa nanga kwa uhondo ribo ribo ya riwaya hii mwisho wa kosa monika it's early morning in maralal start your morning informed educated entertained and above all know your country from the beautiful plains of samburu county to the skyscrapers of nairobi morning cafe certainly got you covered indeed a beautiful place to watch and certainly a moment of understanding and knowing your country indeed to the remotest parts of every county join me linda alela every weekday from 6 a.m. to 9:30 a.m. The diversity of Kenya's wildlife has gained international fame. This is a pellets that we give to the tourists, the giraffes we ration because we don't want the giraffes to eat too much of this. We mm. want them to have more of the natural browse. We may not always get the opportunity to go out to see the wildlife, but you will never miss the opportunity to see it from the comfort of your couch. This is home to animals that have been found out there either injured, abandoned or confiscated from people who are holding them illegally. Only on TV 47 Wildlife every Sunday at 7:30 p.m. Disability is a club that anyone can join. I live with special needs. It means I have a limitation. There are things I can't be able to to do personally myself. And in our journey to talk about disability, we tell the stories of those with disabilities and even sit with specialists to understand what it means for those affected directly and indirectly. Everybody's life mine has also been faced with ups and downs. If it becomes a self self stigmatized thing where you 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 feel like uh, you are judging yourself too harsh you, you blame yourself and uh, you you are you, you perceive that it happened because you failed join me zainab mohammed on beyond the limit every saturday at 7:30 pm An entrepreneur is defined as someone who has the ability and desire to establish, administer and succeed in a startup venture along with risks entitled to it to make b- profits. B- 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 Sorry, here we're back and you know I, I <laughs> how fast time, time is moving yeah. and uh, we have about it's something I want to I don't know whether I'll push it to 40 and there are a couple of other issues that we'd love to speak to. First of all, when it came our e-government in mpango ya corruption, that when we have to speak to and especially in relation to what happened yesterday and we would want to ask you whether there is a looming handshake because in as much as we want to overlook what lay yeah. over the yeah. Yeah. We'll not talk about uh, All right, so here we are. No, <laughs> don't talk about leopard. Don't talk about leopard. <laughs> All right, let's allow Kevin to respond. And yeah. Kevin, as you respond, is it me or it's in the public domain? It's in black and white that uh, the finance bill that is 2023 will sail through at the level of parliament from the way Mushimiwa speaks from the way the president speaks and from the way mm. we all understand that the majority is on the side of the president and uh, this uh, masking because in 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 about how many days we had like only five days in 20, on the 20th at least i think it's still open for the public to speak yes. to it and then yeah. officially we get to hear what the members of parliament have to say So let me start <coughs> by responding by responding 
and indicate that one, I don't come from Gatundu South. Mm. So in my analogy, because apparently Mwishmiwa is today very anal analogous, mm -hmm. I say that where I come from, the farmers have not seen the fertilizer, including myself. Yeah. Whether it's by subscription or whether it's by logging in or whatever mechanism, I don't think there is any farmer who will speculate with government against climate change issues, which include coming from a very long drought period and then suddenly God blesses us with, ra with rain and you have to now continue waiting for the fertilizer. <clears throat> Number one. Number two, there is no clear plan beyond the fertilizers. What do we do with the pesticides? What are the other additives? Because the fertilizer that I think we need to be helping our farmers to get has to go beyond the one-time fertilizer. There's fertilizer which you use at the point of planting, at the point of weeding, and even very close to <coughs> now uh, reaping your, your fruits. So that's why I said we need to, as Moishima talks about macroeconomics, the thinking by government also needs to be macro so that we see the tail end of it from the very beginning. The government has data, including of small scale farmers who are planting in less than an acre, in an eighth, in quarters and all that. Why? Because analysis has been done. If you go to any part of this country, particularly where farming is being done, we know the total number of farmers who have what amount of land to use for farming. In Kiambu County, where it comes from, because we also have programs there, there is clearly not very, not very good farming in certain parts, including Ruiru and Juja, because of real estate. You know? So these are, uh, this is an, an analysis that government needs to have in its mind when it's thinking about how to build capacity, how to subsidize, and also how to enhance productivity. And talking about productivity, mm. I think that uh, I also mentioned, Moshimiwa, that we have parts of this country where the government needs to also come and help in capacity building for diversification of productivity. For example, you have farmers who are growing sugarcane. Mm. But the sugarcane, ultimately when it is harvested, the kind of uh, uh, results or harvest that government is looking for <coughs> is looking for does not give them the yields mm -hmm. that they have probably spent because of the tonnage issues. Maybe the, 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 the kilos don't match what government wants to harvest, maybe partly because you are not uh, planting it in the nucleus of the companies. And we have very many examples that we can be able to give. Sony mm -hmm. Sugar, uh, Miwani, Mohoroni, and several others. So I think that we, when we talk about <coughs> what actions government needs to do, and that's why I said that government is, is asking for more time, which in my view should not be, because Kenyans are not sitting and waiting for that time for government, particularly because of the narrative that government had, that we know where the pain is pinching us, we are going to fix it. So let us see it being fixed in a manner that also brings in the voices of the citizens. And, and government has the machinery, including helping the small-scale farmers to get into networks yeah. so that you actually uh, have them uh, even, even register. We are asking people to log into and subscribe, but we can also register them into groups, into circles and all that. So that we say, kiongozi wenu ataenda kwa chukulia fertilizer and by this end of this day, you all have fertilizer. Yeah, so that we the don't government, those that are not exactly, exactly. The government will help you to plow, we will bring in tractors and in uh, between Monday and Wednesday, on this day of the month, we are going to plow so and so and so's land. So and so. It, it's a mechanism where the citizen also feels that government is taking part in their own uh, cries, heels, and also the pain. Mm -hmm. Now, getting back to the issue of the finance bill, of course it will pass because of uh, past experiences. Zero amendment? There could or be adjustment? a few because there is a lot yeah. of pressure. Yeah. There could be a few amendments mm. because of uh, pressure from different stakeholders, including manufacturers, people who feel that some of these processes are not very fit. But by and large, we have also seen the chair of the budget committee, Moishimwa, is in Dindi Nyoro, right? Uh, really talking about the space of public participation and why it is exactly. important for mm. citizens to, part to, part mm. to participate. So by and large, the finance bill will pass. I think part of the conversation, Celinda, need to really border on our tax regime and also our tax policy. Yeah. Mm. It, would, it is quite unfortunate that uh, the way in which we do our budget and also levy taxes really is based on political emotions. Yeah. But I want to request Mwishimiwa here to take this message because we have also communicated it uh, to other quarters, mm -hmm. that it is important that because Kenya Kwanzaa 
rode its campaign on an economy narrative. Mm -hmm. Can we have a moment to think about a tax policy mm -hmm. that guides a lot of things, including foreign direct investments? Investors who are watching the president uh, a few days ago would be quite shocked to listen to the kind of narratives on taxation that the president was 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 sharing. Mm. There has to be a clear guideline so that people know that between for the next 10 years, I can prospect with my investments in Kenya because the tax base is the, the tax regime is very stable. Yeah, it is sustainable. And there are clear measures on shocks on taxation mm. because the government is, in my view, from a very um, uh, citizen understanding of taxation is experimenting okay. on where we think we have a lot of money and where we think we are making a lot of money and where we think we are not making a lot of money. So we take here, we put here, and that is really experimental. Mm. We need to have a mechanism where we can be able to project that within the next 10 years, because the government, for example, hopes that it will be in place for the next 10 years or mm. within the first five years, and that this is based on the medium term expenditure frameworks, because these are ongoing conversations mm. that border on the budget, including even the supplementary budget that Mwishimua is talking about. Yeah. Because the President Uru Kenyatta's government didn't run on a vacuum. So you also can't use explanation that we are still implementing the former president's budget and that we have not appropriated our own budget. Mm -hmm. It is the same environment that is based on a number of <laughs> programs. In fact, even as he talks about roads, because Mwishimua wants to <clears throat> run away with a lot of uh, uh, innuendos, <coughs> sorry, the president keeps promising roads. Right. So he can't sit and say we have stopped uh, uh, constructing <laughs> We're roads. We're looking forward to But even up to Saturday, yeah. in Nyandarwa, yes, he, the did. he said that he said he's going to be road road back back there. Him, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. He cost 42 kilometers to engage yeah. your Saba and Mesema, to yeah. 47 kilometers. Where yeah. is that money coming from? Right. The president goes to every part of this country, including Nyanza. Yeah, yeah, where mm -hmm. I come from. And because we had a meeting with the governor on uh, Friday, mm -hmm. just Friday last week, yeah. reviewing the CIDP and also looking at national government's commitments on CIA County, yeah. most of the promises that were made in CIA have not even been budgeted for. Mm -hmm. And yet, Mwishime, who is a member of the budget committee, will tell us we are not constructing the roads because we don't have the money. But the president goes to people and tells them, we are going to construct. Mm -hmm. Who is uh, wait, 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 wait. who is not saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, he can't operate on government. Allow us to be here. So that you tell them that... Let's be fair. Let's be fair to this gentleman. Unless you're taking 30 seconds. Just a minute. 30 seconds. Just a minute, Linda. And you know, even this debate at times, it cannot be a merry-go-round. It can be a merry-go-round. We agree. But we have to be balanced. The point comes that must be... This is bad. It's a salvo that must be... Make it 30 seconds. Jan can come in. You know... What Kevin doesn't understand is that when a government says that it's going to do something, then there's a process of doing it. Mm. When the president says that we shall now do this Jambini road, he means that we shall now sit and budget for mm -hmm. it and then do it. Mm -hmm. That's what it means. Yes. I mean, that's true. Even uh -huh. I, when I went and told people that we're going to do a certain road, I didn't mean I wasn't in parliament then and it was not budgeted for. It meant that I would go to parliament and then I will make and initiate the process of fixing a road. <laughs> then you watch, and, wait a and wait a minute. 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 Let me finish, please. 30 seconds. Yes, and I want to say, I've told you that uh, where we find ourselves in right now is because the government, the previous government, invoked Article 223 of the Constitution and did a lot of work on it, which was not precedented. You know, some of these things were made, and nobody imagined that you will come one day and say, you know, if you're given an exit door and you say this is an emergency door, it doesn't, when, when we create an emergency door, nobody anticipates that you're going to be using it as a normal day-to-day uh, uh, -day door. Mm -hmm. So there was a window that was created in the Constitution in Article 223, and nobody anticipated that the government was going to use it and now decide that this is how we shall be procuring, and we shall circumlocute all the processes of government mm -hmm. and now use 223. That is what we're saying we shall not do. And we're saying that when the president says in CIA that we shall fix this road, he now comes and uses the normal process of budgeting. Mm -hmm. And the government, like I told you, does not, there's no switch. 
that you go and put in mm -hmm. on and on. Even a road, you do not go and say now there will be a road here. This is not you know, uh, the days of Moy. Let there be light. This is not a story of creation where God said, let there be light. And then there was light. And then there was light. This is basically what I say. If we are not keen, the corners, the corners, they will come. They will always take us through. The sense of entitlement that Kenya Kwanzaa government has, and I think I've I've mentioned this. You you sit, you hear how they speak, and and you see definitely you think that you see this would be done only that uh, when when it's about to be done there's a detour. Now the promises that were made they were with clear timelines, yeah. and and if you could play those clips, I mean uh, uh, Kevin and Moshi, if I'm wrong, in Sia, in Homa Bay, and everywhere, like like also in Nyandaro, there, there are timelines, yeah. and and you see now the debate is. How is the implementation? Yeah. You know, um, and through what processes uh, it shall pass. So one of the things, one of the things I also noticed, if, if, if you could check on the on the, on the dailies today, yeah. um, I mean, it's quite sad that all the front pages are riddled by two things: either mm -hmm. corruption, or uh, you know, um, tax. 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 Uh -huh. You know, okay. everywhere. Mm. So in a government today, we are talking about a country that is just riddled. You wake up and the citizens are, you know, watching the news, hearing the radios and reading the papers. That is exactly what is happening as opposed to what, you know, uh, the regime said. And, and, this, and, and, this would not have happened. And with your permission. But, but as, you, as, 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 you are, as you are as you are proceeding with this, you asked if the, you know, the finance bill yes, is going, you going, going, going to sail through. Well, I, I am very skeptical and I'm not really in confident like Kevis. Uh, because I believe that even within the members of Parliament of Kenya Kwanzaa, mm -hmm. you know, both in the Senate and in the National Assembly, yeah. I think there are members of Parliament who are equally, you know, um, uh, feeling the heat, mm -hmm. especially by the expression from the, you know, the counties that they represent yeah. or the, the, the constituencies they represent. And this is why I was pleading with Mishimua here. Because for sure, I, I know that partly young people, women and, you know, vulnerable in his constituency mm -hmm. has reached out to him, you know, honestly yeah. on the merits of this bill and how this would affect. Yeah. And you see, I, I really wonder, Mahesh, if you would go ahead, you know, if you would go ahead, you know, with all this in your conscience to pass and to debate and to, you know, to make, to vote for this bill. I, I believe that there are members of parliament who definitely, if not to pass it, but then would you know uh, push it back for amendment yeah. this bit like you, you are talking about. Mm -hmm. So, and lastly, I, I think that we are also being <laughs> taken aback because in one moment there is a lot of double speak. Mm -hmm. um, the agents of double speak, both, and I keep on being fair, in the opposition and in the government. And this is why citizens are left wondering then who is occupying the space. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. Why am I saying so? So when, for example, the housing and levy fund, you know, was being uh, proposed, proposed in the public, yeah. both the head of state, senators, members of uh, National Assembly said, you see, but the constitution in Article 40, you know, say that the, the rights to property, you know, that every person has got a right to housing. Yeah. You know, th that was the case. Everyone has got a right to housing. Mm. And you see, if you're not careful on how you read that, and you're not careful to read it in parts with other provisions in the constitution, yeah. then you think that right. this is really a right thing. Yeah. In Kibera, um, the UN Habitat Housing you know, uh, Project in 2013, you know, 2012, 2013, and this has been used as a best practices when the UN Habitat only saw that people living in the informal settlement had got a need in housing. And therefore, it was a need to upgrade on how they live mm. by provision of you know, uh, quality housing. And you see, there were a number of people from Soweto East and various areas of Kibra, in which this government is equally again targeting to do the same mistake, mm. is to give them, uh, you know, to relocate them to the new housing. Yeah. And I keep on giving this example in the platform that I have. Even as we speak in 2012, 2013, those who were relocated in the slum the new place they called Canaan. Mm. They no longer live in those places. Why? 
They sold those houses, and some of them are even renting those houses, mm -hmm. have gone back to the informal settlement. Mm -hmm. Why? Because it is indicating that their problem was not the was not the house. Okay. Their problem was on the provision of other basic needs. Priorities. Priorities. Okay. And you see, the government again is equally doing the same mistakes and saying, you see, for housing and a better housing, and in the promotion of Article 40 of the Constitution, we are again providing for more, you know, housing uh, for the, 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 the informal settlement, mm -hmm. Kibra Madari. Mm -hmm. But, but, but these, if, for example, the, the, the finance bill is going to sell through, I foresee a situation where there's going to be a lot of legal landmines in it. Wow. Someone else will move to court in the questioning of those. Mm -hmm. Because again, our Article 10 provides for robust public participation as a value, mm -hmm. as a principle of good governance, uh, national governance, principle of governance in this uh, you know, particular constitution. So I foresee a number of debates. And, and, and the media should equally be focusing on what is the progress in the participation of public, uh, you know, uh, public, public participation. To, for us to know exactly what are the citizens Say. exactly expressing okay. with regards to this uh, particular And thing. then whether they'll be taken, whether they'll be taken or not. So that's, All right. Yeah, see. Gentlemen, see. allow us to shift this conversation yeah, and yeah. briefly talk about draft. And, 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 and I mean, you've also had uh, Dan alluding to the fact that it's unfortunate that even on the front pages of the papers, we're talking about draft and how you know difficult it is for the people of Kenya. But to give credit, and I don't know whether it's on this basis that we are, can give the president credit, especially in relation to the action that uh, he takes against uh, you know, some few individuals that as to the question of cancer. And this is alleged cases of corruption as it is. I heard the CS4 Health saying that, well, I cannot quite substantiate whether the PS was directly involved in this one, but nonetheless, home she has gone. So here we are, right direction towards dealing with the question of corruption. And is this fair, if at all, then it's on basis of allegation that someone goes home. You know, first of all, the Bible in uh, Matthew. Uh, states, bit by bit. That, bit by I'm bit. Even, I'm not even, <laughs> fine. I'm not even quoted. Let me all quote right. then you. Wait, don't be fine. in a rush. Fine, fine. You know, the Bible in uh, Matthew chapter 6 and verses 30 addresses uh -huh. uh, Daniel. Yes. And says that if the Lord clothes the grass today mm -hmm. and tomorrow is cast in the oven, how much more would he clothe you? You of little faith. Mm -hmm. Have some faith <laughs> in the system. Yes. And I told you, when you say, when the government says it's going to do something, have faith, it's going to happen. Yeah. People said, oh, you know, this is the lot of corruption. He's going to allow these people, you know, in this government, there will be corruption, this mm -hmm. thing. I mean, and the president said, you know, the day before yesterday, he was asked mm -hmm. about that question by one of the journalists. Yes, mm -hmm. on Kemsa. On Kemsa. I think that was on Sunday. Yes. yes. And he said, just I will clean Kemsa. wait and you will see. All right? It was not even 24 hours. Mm -hmm. He just did it. But if, when you look at the debate that was on that night, on Sunday night, mm -hmm. because I was somewhere, and uh, the, the likes of Dan and Kevin, <laughs> the people of little faith who are now beckoned by the Bible, you know, and they are told, please, just have some faith, and these things are going to be okay mm -hmm. in, the, in the fullness of time, you know? I'm just saying, by the way, it, it's honest. It, it's good to be honest with the, to give this government a chance, yeah. you know? I mean, even before some of these people have properly sat on those, the president said, I am the one who gave you this position. I don't think you're doing the right thing. I don't think you've been, you, you're helping me to clean the mess that we found here. Please leave. And what you're saying, having and serving as a PS or a CS, you serve at the place of the president. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right, but 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 so there are also legal provisions that just a minute. protect you as you okay. you serve at the pleasure of the president. Oh yeah, and that is it. And whether you are and the president can even remove you even without having been involved in any corruption, mm -hmm. you could be working properly, and the president decides now mm. your time has come. Yeah. Now I want someone else to serve in that position. All right, yeah, yeah, yeah. so there's no uh, debate about whether you are going to be whether there's no entitlement. And you know this thing, you know the president talked about, and, and I'm sorry, I keep repeating this, but you know, it's the truth. Mm. He's, the, he's our leader, so we have to talk about some of those things. He said, let's stop this preoccupation about this, some of these positions. Yeah. In some countries, by the way, you go to uh, some places, they don't even know some of their leaders, mm -hmm. because the government just needs to work. And it doesn't matter who is in that position. If Dan is given a position, mm -hmm. if Kevin is given a position in this government, 
and he's serving my interest in Gatundu South. Why must I, why do I want to go and look at his CV and see, okay, he went to see <laughs> a primary school now. How, how is that important? Mm -hmm. And you know, we must get to a point where we stop, you know, I've been, let me, let me be honest, I'm a Kikuyu, mm -hmm. you know, and I have looked at these governments and I've seen the benefits over times having a Kikuyu president. Mm -hmm. And at times, and I come from Gatundu South, where we have had two presidents. The mm -hmm. position I sit was Jomo Kenyatta's seat, mm -hmm. yeah. was Uhuru Kenyatta's seat. Mm -hmm. Now I'm the one on it, you know? I'm not being a president. And, yes, you, you, <laughs> excellent. <laughs> there's, a, there's a trend. Yes. After every two members of parliament, then the other one becomes and a president. Yeah. Uh, now, please keep my <laughs> number for that time. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you know, please be like that thief who was crucified with Jesus. When you go to heaven, please remember me. You know? I don't know about Daniel. <laughs> but I'm saying, uh -huh. I'm saying that at times mm -hmm. it could be, it is such a disadvantage. Yeah. You know, and at times people used to come to my village and wonder, this is Gatundu South. Yeah. This is where Kenyatta came from. Uh -huh, uh -huh. I only got electricity in my house in the village. Uh, some seven years ago. Yeah. I mean, all the, and I'm, you know, and, uh, and, and, and it's not because I could not have, uh, afford it. I mean, I've been working and everything, but mm -hmm. it was so yeah, hard, yeah. but there was no power. There was nowhere that uh, anybody could get power, access to power anywhere. It was not anywhere near. The roads, water, I don't have pipe water. Yeah. We are just creating pipe water now, you know, all those things. And then you're saying, these things that uh, one of us is at the helm, and then you think that now, there are people who thought that now because Kibaki is in power, that Kikuyu's are, you remember that narrative, yes. that Kikuyu's are given uh, ATM cards and they yes. go to equity and then they get money. Mm -hmm. You know, we must remove that preoccupation with the people who are the help. And we must now start thinking of ourselves because I keep thinking the struggle of a guy from Siaya and the struggle of a guy from Gatundu South yeah. are the same if the economy doesn't work. Yeah. The success of someone in Bondo and the success of someone from Moranga is the same if the economy works, yeah. you know? And we must start thinking about this country as a unit. And you thrive. I mean, if you are born in Uganda and if you are born in uh, Timbuktu, you are a human being and you should have an environment to work and thrive. You know? Sure. So, so, and I'm saying, in, when it comes to corruption, let us just believe that this thing, it doesn't matter who is there. I mean, the person who's been sacked is, is, is Amboro. You know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But for me, I'm not seeing Amboro. For me, I'm seeing that we needed someone at that position to deliver, yeah. you know, yeah. because it's a very important uh, sector, it's the health sector, and you know how hard our people are suffering, because the, the especially those processes of procurement, and, and uh, by the way, I'm just about to bring a bill uh, in Parliament mm -hmm. on something called, uh, to, on the introduction of something called uh, medical adjudicators, mm. because it has become a death sentence. Hospitals have become, hospital bills have become death sentences, yeah. mm -hmm. that you, you slap with a bill of 100,000, you have no recourse. You do not even know what has been atomized there. Even as educated as you may be, as long as you're not a medic, those things, you do not even know those terms. You cannot challenge. You have nowhere to go. It becomes a death sentence. It's even worse with yeah, insurance. Sure. You know, they, it, insurance. Exactly. Exactly. And we're saying now, this thing, issues of health, to me, that's what the president said. After mm -hmm. making sure that the community is, held, is, 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 uh, is fed, that the society is fed, the, that the country is fed, the next thing is we must make sure that the community has proper health. And then after that, we educate it and now all those things. So for me, on issues of corruption, I would say that the president has is really outdoing himself. Uh, he's been uh, called the Lord of Corruption and he's been said that everybody who's going to serve there is going to be you know, serving. And, and the most corrupt, guys have even said that the most corrupt are going to be the darlings of the president. No, 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 no. We are saying no. If you do not, uh, if you're not working towards the success of this country, just leave. And we allow must give him credit. Allow us to take a quick and then come allow the gentlemen, uh, you know, He's give us their view on whether they agree. When I want to. Just think about this. Just think about break, you know. <laughs> Every time I want to the break. Yeah. <laughs> you, are, you are preaching too much. You don't want to break. You don't want to break. Yeah. But it's okay. Have we taken the break?